All right, and we are live. Um, so I'm going to do a quick audio check, but welcome, welcome. If you're just joining us now or in the future, great to have you. I'm going to go quickly do that audio check I mentioned. Test one, two. Sounds good. Um, so this audio is coming from the camera itself, which is why I turn the AC off. So if you hear some like mumbling later, that's what's going on. But I thought I'd first start by telling you a little bit about what we're going to do today. So first thing that I think we're going to do is we're going to go through a couple really quick things um, some side topics that shouldn't take more than a few minutes. Then we're going to dive into animation. I got a pretty special world I'm looking forward to showing you. It's coming out on Wednesday, so this is definitely a uh, sneak peek at something we're working on. But I thought it would be really interesting to take a look at um, animating because, oh, so I'm like, we've tried a lot of different animation tactics in the past. But today I think is going to be the most powerful animation. So uh, I was recently working on an animation tool that I thought could be useful and then I scrapped it completely because it just wasn't. And so in the past we did keyframe animation, which is not bad. I've used it quite a few times, so I like keyframe animation. But in terms of like almost like real world applications where you need to know step by step storytelling, keyframe animation just doesn't cut it. So today I'm going to show you how we can do that, which is exciting. Um, and we'll be taking your questions. So great to have you guys. Thanks for joining. And you'll see that we have in the poll, you can vote for some other topics. So after we're done with the animation section, we're going to go to, we have options for bowling, air hockey, snapping to grid, or climbable ladder. To give you a quick talk about what those are, a bowling would be, we'd have a physics-based bowling, physics-based bowling pins. We would roll the ball, hit the pins down, calculate them, reset them. Um, some fun stuff. It's great to see some votes coming in on that. Air hockey is also similarly physics-based. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how we would tackle it, but I, I would look forward to trying it out. I know there's some new properties that might be useful. In the past, we had to kind of fake it, but maybe this time we can lean into the physics engine. Um, snapping to grid is a cool one. So snapping to grid is where we would have a grid that you would snap to. So think of like a chessboard or checkers or Lego pieces. So anything that needs snapping is what Snap to Grid is going to talk about. A climbable ladder is where you would grab physical objects and be able to pull yourself up. Absolutely terrified of that one. So uh, you're welcome to keep voting for it. But uh, I'm like, I have no idea how we would do it. I just know that we would do it. And uh, there's some, and the reason I'm scared of it is because it's reliant on new features I have never touched. So that one's actually kind of an exciting one, but no, I'm terrified. So if you guys vote for that, go for it. Um, but it looks like bowling's got the most votes, so feel free to keep voting for that. Snap to Grid just got a vote, very nice. And keep them coming in. If you don't see the, um, the votes, you can always um, comment your vote as well. Um, the next thing I was gonna note there is the, um, if you don't like those ideas, comment your ideas. Or if you have questions that might be really quick, feel free to comment them as well. Looking at some of the notes, wow, I'm not coming in when it's ending. <laughs> great to have you high gravity right at the beginning, I know. So great. Hey Lakes, how you doing? I'm doing great, Dion. Thanks for asking. Uh, the Shoes says, just real quick, I saw you had a video up about meshes. That is just meshes they are making available, but not what we can import on our own, right? Perhaps the start to marketplace on approvals. Um, I don't know anything. Um, <laughs> Actually, asterisk, I won't lie to you. I have nothing I am allowed to say legally. Uh, but I think it is very exciting. I encourage you to take them apart, try them out. They're fantastic. If you look at the oak tree, it's extremely expensive on your geometric complexity, costing 3% for the large oak. But you can take branches of that oak tree and build your own custom tree that might only take up half or 1% geometric complexity, and it looks fantastic. Uh, some guys on my team are doing some fantastic work with that. Um, and when I say guys, I'm usually just referring to people in general. I know um, some people take offense to that. I don't mean any offense to the gals out there. Uh, great to have you all as well. Um, but yeah, so there are some really cool things you can do with those new meshes, especially my favorite being that new oak tree with those really cool like rock-like structures. I mean, just depending on how you paint them. Um, but I, personally would love to see some more mesh stuff because right now well okay wait, wait. i want to roll back i'm going to roll back just for a second because i want to tell you my real like real genuine opinion like i'm excited for meshes don't get me wrong but my real opinion here is i wish we could have created meshes based on primitive objects by like cutting into them and like cut 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 basically i want boolean geometry you know and um 
I don't think that's how those are created. So, I'm gonna cut there before I accidentally overspeak. Got a little baby coming in. If you wanna come say hi to little baby Nalia, if my mom's watching, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> and here's Ko coming in with a little Nalia. Aw, say hi to the family online. Those are our digital friends. Yeah, they're over there though. <laughs> oh, so cute. Um, other questions coming in. Congrats on the new featured assets. Thank you. So exciting, oh, right? Oh, oh, um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Shu says, but is it their meshes at this point? Yes, there is no, like, just like there's no way for us to get our assets. Hi, Kyo. Um, just like there's no way for us to get our assets in the asset library, I know Vidu has 20 assets in there, but I kid you not, I've spent the last six months fighting for that. Uh, like even prior to the assets library being launched, I knew about it coming and I was like, we have to get Vidu assets in there. People want these assets in their library. And they were like worried about legal, they're worried about us getting paid. And I'm like, I don't want money, just put them in the library. And after six months of legal and just convincing them that it's okay, we finally got them in there. And it takes a lot of hours to get them in. So um, we're gonna keep working on them and getting more out to you, but it just takes a while. So just stay tuned. And as, as they are coming out, they're gonna be like the best versions they possibly can be. I'm really polishing everything up before they get published to the asset library. Uh, let's see. Hi Gravity says, I have a feeling in the future with all the meshes, Horizon Worlds is going to be insane, crazy realistic. I totally agree. I mean, um, so Oculus, Euphoria and I, you saw in that video, we were doing a lot of tests with the meshes to see what was possible. And what we realized is some of them are lower geometric complexity costs than their primitive counterparts, which makes sense when you think that the benefit of a mesh is it combines the meshes and reduces the amount of vertices. So. Honestly, I'm super excited to see how we can use these to make our worlds more efficient. You know, I'm optimization, inter like really heavily interested in optimization. So you could imagine like when we build a brick wall today, we have to use shapes that have every mesh. But in the future, a brick wall could just be one side painted with bricks. So I'm just like, there's lots of things I'm really excited about. And I look forward to seeing this tool keep getting developed. Uh, although. I will say I think it's still a, like multi-year development before it comes into its full um, its full being. I mean, I would think in a decade from now, like when we're in our full metaverse state, <laughs> full metaverse state, like we've <laughs> whatever that means. But you know what I mean? Like the idea might be that we'd be able to build our own meshes in VR and pull on them and modify them. Like that would be so cool because to me, the biggest benefit I see in Horizon Worlds is this in VR aspect. And I know some people are still like, uncomfortable in VR, um, but once you get comfortable, it changes everything. It's so much faster. You're working in 3D space rather than a 2D space trying to look into 3D, and it's just, it's so good. And so I think that's kind of like the long vision is like mesh building, and so I'm really excited to see how it keeps going. Bool would be amazing. I Yes, it would be. <laughs> um, wave. I did that. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> minted as an NFT. <laughs> uh, I, I personally, I do hope there's some NFT implementation of some form in, in Horizon Worlds in the future. I'm not sure exactly what that might look like, but I'm definitely interested. It's specifically um, for those interested. What I would love to see is where if I created an asset and I gave it to y'all for free and then half of you, not half of you, but you know, like some of you like 0.01% of you go out and take that asset and then remix it and relist it on the asset library, but for money. And then I can take like a five or 15% cut to like finance me to you as a company. I think that would be super cool because it gives us a, the ability to get it out there to the public as fast as possible for as cheap as possible, i.e. free. Um, and then also allows you guys to make some money and then still like throw some compensation back as a thank you to us. So that's kind of like my hope for the future. I know that's like, that's an NFT built-in feature, which is why I kind of hope that's somehow related. Um, yeah. <laughs> Film Sensei says, nice avatar, high gravity gaming. Ah, welcome to, welcome Film Sensei, here to have you. Ah, the wave was for your daughter. Oh, okay, I take back the wave, retracted. Uh, so great, you guys. So let's, um, I'm gonna go quickly since we have some more people joining us, a quick run through what we're gonna do today and then we're gonna jump in. Um, if you haven't seen the poll, keep voting. You guys have already got seven votes in there. 
keep the votes coming in. I'm just going to quickly run through the poll options here. Bowling is where we're going to have multiple physics objects, including physics-based pins and a physical bowling ball. We're going to roll the bowling ball, make it nice slide. It's going to feel like bowling-ish. Um, <laughs> and then when it knocks the pins over, we'll both reset the pins and count the pins. I might need, bite, need to bite my tongue later, um, but <laughs> that's the idea. Um, and then air hockey is similarly also going to be physics-based using some of the new physics properties. We'll see what we can do with that. Snapping to grid is like Legos or like chess. It's where we're going to be able to let go of an object and it snaps into the area that it's closest to. So if you like put down a grid on the ground, you could then snap it to that grid. Uh, climbable ladder is where we would grab onto a physical object and be able to pull ourselves up. Way harder than it sounds, by the way. So um, if you're looking for easy tutorials, that one's not it. But uh, at some point, we're going to do that tutorial. I know it. I'm just so scared, as you might have already heard. Um, so then what are we doing first and foremost? Well, the first thing I wanted to do is, uh, well, actually, preface, excitement. What are we doing today? That's like, before we get into those user-generated ideas and going to those, we are going to look at animation. And the reason I wanted to look at animation is because this past week, I had spent like an hour, two hours trying to build a brand new animation script. And I know that doesn't sound like a lot of time, but for me writing a script, that was a ton of time to put into it. And I realized it just wasn't possible to write an animation script that was universal. And so today I wanted to talk about animation from a fundamental, how do you tell a story in Horizon Worlds using the animation tools that are available. And so we're gonna walk through that from a beginner level, but it's also gonna have a lot of really cool advanced topics that are easy for anyone to implement. So I'm looking forward to doing that. And I'm gonna show you a sneak peek while we're doing that of a world I'm working on for this Wednesday's special world tours. Um, and then before we get into that, I was going to talk to you about a couple quick little topics here. So somebody had asked, how could you do a mini map heads up display? I'm sorry I forgot um, the name of the user, but um, they commented on the mini map video and were like, how do you make it into a heads up display? And um, the way you would make it up into a heads up display is so frustratingly difficult. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's an easier way to do it. Um, I guess I think, I think what you could do is group it into an attachable object and then snap that attachable to the user's head. So it's basically a wearable like hat basically that's invisible and then it's like out here in front of the user which would allow you to have the mini map. Um, I'm just trying to think about the icons because the icons are so cool. And the problem with the icons is making sure they stay in the right position. And I think to do that, the icons would need to be locally scripted so that they can move in real time with the map as the player's moving their head around. Yeah, so that's theoretically how you would do a mini map like that. But the user's question was explicitly also, how do you render the map so it's like only showing a certain portion? And this was where I was like, there's no way we're touching this. Like the, the first thing I just told you, we could touch. Uh, that one isn't too hard, and if a lot of people ask about that in the chat today, we, we, we could potentially go into that. Um, but the hard part would be rendering it so it follows the user. And the reason that's hard is because you have to render the map. And so if you've never done graphics rendering, which I haven't, um, it's very difficult, and you have to like think about uh, all the pieces that are like nearby, where are they, relative. And so for that, you would want to locally script everything potentially use asset spawning um, if you wanted it to be in high detail. Uh, more or less, it's really not for Horizon Worlds. If I'm being completely honest, it's just not for Horizon Worlds because I'm pretty sure if you were doing this on like a like Unity-based game, there's probably some ways to do like clipping so it's only showing a certain portion, then you're sliding it around and you'd have it as a static like JPEG that's moving around. So it's like way less intense. So I just don't think it's a Horizon Worlds like thing that you should do. In Horizon Worlds, at least not yet, until some of those features get implemented from Unity. Um, as I'm not a Unity developer, if I'm wrong about that, please comment the actual answer so we can share that information. Um, but what I do think that um, you could do theoretically in Horizon, maybe easier, is you would develop <laughs> you would develop a text-based map of your world and then render sections of it in text. And I think that would be more doable if you knew how to use all of the spacing, because you'd set it to mono space, which allows you to have equal distance between the spaces. You could then set the height of the lines so that you made sure that they're equal in grid, and then like different icons. 
It's way more work than it's worth, but if you're interested in doing it, I would love to see someone implement that, and hopefully that gives you kind of like an idea of how it could be done. Um, but yeah, if you imagine like, to give you a quick, I don't want to go any more deeper in this because this is, I know it's so hard, but if you made a list, so first of all, you need to know the code, which is mono space equals, and then the, the space that you want the mono spacing to be. And so that that's on the, if you look in the new asset library under community feature, you'll pull out the text block and that'll have that mono space code on there if you need to look that up. And then you also need to do line height equals same space. And that would basically create a grid so that every space, every character typed has the exact same space per character. So then you create a list of strings that represents every coordinate on the position. You'd set them all the space bars at the first. So you'd be like, here's a list of 100 spaces, which would be like a 10 by 10 grid. And then you could move your way through that. Okay, hopefully I didn't lose too many of you there, but like way, way harder than it should be. And so hopefully we just get an easier way to implement that in Horizon, because for now that's just pretty difficult to do. Um, <laughs> so now with that question out of the way, the next question comes from a gentleman who wants to know how to pause the timer. So in the new asset pack, it comes with a timer and it's really easy to pause it. And so I'm gonna show you guys that in like a couple seconds and then we're gonna dive into animation. So thanks for staying with me. Feel free to comment your questions, keep voting in the poll. We are not done voting in the poll until we're done with the animation. So you guys have plenty of time and there's only nine votes. So five of you go get your votes in right now so we can uh, determine what we're doing next. Okie dokie. I do see a couple questions so I might um, ba, 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 ba. Is it possible to pour liquid and show it in the glass cup? Um, Wendy, if you look at um, Janimator Zero has a cup and there's a video on the Facebook page, if on the Meta Horizon Worlds Facebook, or excuse me, not Facebook, but the YouTube page for Meta Horizon Worlds, there is a video by Janimator on how he does it. Really also, it's also extremely complicated. Let's just start there. Um, but he has some easier methods at the beginning. The actual method that makes it look really realistic is extremely hard. Um, bum, 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 bum. Also, when the cup is near the head and tilted, is it possible? Yeah, um, check out that video. I think you'll uh, really like it. If somebody wants to go grab that, I'm gonna go ahead and start diving into the actual uh, tutorials today. So appreciate y'all hanging with me here. I think I also have to log back in because I waited so long, but that's okay. I won't take a sec. And we're going to also turn the AC on, so it's going to get a little... Oh, I'm already in. That's easy. And then I just have to hit this button. Boop. Okay, so we should have really high quality audio. Uh, looks like it's good. And... Yeah, everything looks good. So let me know if there's any issues. I can actually see your chat from inside of here. I got a little function. Give me two seconds to pin it to my experience. There we go. And now I can see all your chat. Very nice. All right. So with that pinned, we'll go ahead and resume Horizon. And we are ready to dive in. And we're going to start in an empty world. And I'm just curious, if you guys have seen this, please comment if you've seen this under... Oh no, they're gone. Oh, they're gone. I wonder if it was an accident. Under rich environments, there were two new ones and they're gone. Oh, weird. Okay. Never mind. So strange. So this, um, there's a, where's the menu board with all the news on it? Oh, I don't know where the menu, the news menu is. Anyway, huh? Okay. Okay. Hey, welcome, Willie. Great to have you. <laughs> I'm going to create a new empty world, and we're going to go take a look at how to pause an animation. New blank world, and we're going to call this, oh, sorry, pause the timer. P-A-U, timer. Okay. Create. Ah, oh, you're very welcome, Herbert. Great to have you. Thanks for joining. So cool being able to see your messages. Air hockey is getting a lot of votes. I would love to do an air hockey. I haven't touched that in over a year. We built it a long time ago with some really like fancy trickery, um, but I'd love to do it this time. I think we could get it really good. There's just been a lot of new features that make it so much easier. All right. So welcome to this world. I hope the guy who wanted this uh, tutorial is watching. Um, and so basically what we wanted to look at today is if you go into your menu under the assets section, you're going to see there's a brand 
Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Um, I'll show you that in a second. <laughs> so under the assets section, under community spotlight, you're gonna find a brand new asset called timer with buttons. If we pull this timer out, you can now modify this timer. And one gentleman was asking, how do we pause this? And so it's actually pretty simple. So if we open up the script, what you're gonna notice is that the, okay, maybe. Once we're inside the script, you're gonna notice that when world is started, we're connecting the plus 30 and minus 30 trigger enter events to local events. And we wanna do the exact same thing, but for pausing. So we head over to our variables tab where we're gonna create a new object variable, which will be the pause trigger. So we'll even call it that, we'll call it E-A-U-S-E-T-R-I-G, okay. So there's our pause trigger object variable created. And now over here, we're gonna duplicate this line. But if you don't know where this connect to is, I'll show you that. It's on your events tab. Right at the very bottom, you'll find connect to event. We're gonna drag that over, placing it here. And then we're gonna head back to our variables tab and pause trigger goes where self is. So now we're gonna connect the pause trigger trigger enter event to a local event with a custom name. So we click this drop down, and this is gonna be called pause, P-A-U-S-E, and confirm. And then we'll go back to our events tab, and at the top, you'll see when event is received. So there it is. We'll drag that over, placing it right here at the top. Drop down and create a new event called pause. Make sure the spelling is correct, although the capitalization should automatically correct itself. There they are, perfect. Now it's important to note that when a trigger is entered, it is entered by an object or a player. In our, in our case, it will definitely be by a player, which means for this pause event to be received, we must create a new parameter referencing the player that has entered the trigger. So we'll drop down, select player, type in PLID, which is short for player ID, because that's the parameter we're receiving. Click confirm. And now when pause is received, what would we like to do? Well, what we want to do is cancel sending event loop. So we just drag this up into here, thumbstick to the right. Now this is going to stop the loop from continuing looping. The problem is it might continue looping even if that's the case, but we're going to try it out anyway and see. It's just the the um, pause doesn't always work. So we'll go ahead and, uh, sorry, what I'm saying is the cancel sending event doesn't always work if it's too closely timed with the event being received. And so we're gonna just try it out by creating a brand new button. I'm gonna actually ungroup this. Oop. And then we can duplicate this over. And then we're gonna grab this trigger and unselect this and then duplicate, slide this over. And now we've got a new button. We can open up the text and label this text. And we'll just call this pause. You could name this whatever you want to call your pause button. There we go. So pause has been named. And now if we open up this trigger, it's kind of hard. So if I put my hand in there with my other hand, or if I zoom in so that my head is inside of the other bounding box, I can then open the properties panel of the trigger a little bit easier. And now with this trigger properties panel open, I know the script is running on the text object here. So I open up the text and you'll see that the pause trigger reference is currently empty. So then what we want to do is go to our trigger over here and drag the reference for this trigger into the empty slot. And sometimes when you have this many triggers, you wanna just name it so it's easier to understand what it is. So pause trigger, and then that will cause the name here when you drag it over for the first time to say pause trigger. And if it doesn't work, you can always clear it out by clicking that X button and then redrag it over. And now it says pause trigger. And so that helps you kind of clarify and make sure you dragged it into the right position. Okay, so with all of that set up, this should be functional. We could make it look a little bit better visually as this is kind of a weird pause pillar. Um, like that would probably look a little bit better, right? Um, even that's still not great, but all right, that'll do. So we're gonna stop the world, clear, and then hit play, which will reset everything. We can then head into play mode. And when I hit this pause button, we have now paused the timer. So hopefully that has answered your question. If you have anything, any other questions about that, please be feel free to leave them in the comments.
this live stream. I will not be coming back to this topic in a video format. It's just kind of a really short piece. So thank you guys so much for uh, watching that. If you have any questions, again, leave it in the comments. If you haven't seen this, again, you'll find it in your menu under the build menu, under assets, under the asset library, under community spotlight. And this is where you have 20 video assets all now available in your library, which is so cool, including this super awesome text formatting. And just a quick note, if... Um, you guys might have seen this. If you didn't, this section has a bug in it now. And so there was something that's been deprecated from this text because it caused the entire thing to break. So if you look at this, um, I wonder if we can click information to get closer. So one of these is no longer functional. I'm really curious what it is, but um, I have to go in and break it apart. So I just haven't done that yet. Okay, so with that, we have covered all of these fantastic things about Timer. So it is time to move on to the next one. Hi, Gamer. <laughs> hey, Charles. Great to have you guys. Um, so <laughs> some guy posted uh, a thing about joining his his world via his link. And I don't know if I should approve the comment or not. So I think I'm just going to ignore it. Sorry, dude. Um, but great to have you. Thanks for joining. <laughs> I make scripting look so easy. It's not my intention. Did you have a question, Herbert? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, you know, I did also struggle a long time ago. I do. I, do, I, do, I, don't, to, I don't know how to say that any more politely, but honestly, it's just practice, practice, practice. I still make small mistakes all the time. But like once you've gone through it for, you know, coming up on two years now, it, it becomes a lot easier. So I, I encourage you to stick with it because it really does get easier over time. Okay. Today we are working on a special tours world that is launching this Wednesday. Here it is. Edit world. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> I'm going to hide this. Charles asks, can we talk about swimming in Horizon Worlds? Um, hey, Jessica. Thanks for joining. Great to have you. Let's see. So swimming, I haven't done this one before, but I know Waffle Copters has. And to do swimming, he basically does this. Oh, I got to stop this world. This world is cursed. So uh, stop the world. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll show you why it's cursed in a second. Um, but yeah, swimming, it's pretty hard because you're moving your hands around and you're like, it's hard. I don't know. Like, because you're not tracking forward direction. So you're like comparing it to the forward of the torso. And then you're only moving the player by the backward momentum. It's probably about as difficult as doing the climbable ladder, actually. So maybe it's not that hard. But um, yeah, it's an interesting. It's interesting. Um, there's a world called Bubble. I don't know if it's still published, but it's by Waffle Copters. If you go to Waffle Copters and you see it, that might be a world worth checking out. Okay. So welcome to a very special world I am working on with Oculus 410 for the World Tours event. I need to do an intro for this video because it's too important, but I wanted to show you why this world has been cursed and hopefully it doesn't cause us any trouble. So I created this thing that on world start spawns the bus and it does a bunch of stuff when the bus arrives and it's just, it's just not good. It's just bad. I found spawning an asset on world start is not a good practice. So I don't recommend you do it. <laughs> so what we're going to do is actually just delete this entire script, this entire thing. And that's totally fine because what we're going to do is just change this world up a little bit. So if we go to the um, asset library, I've got a whole section. Also, I just got this today. This is my character. Um, it was created by Sadie Chan and it's so cute. It's a little blue shirt guy. Uh, so, so excited for that. And, uh, yeah, so thank you, Sadie Chan, for making this. So cool. Uh, but if we go to Horizon World Tours, I've created a folder for everything. And in this case, I have the Space Bus asset. There it is. That's exactly where I want it. Unfortunately, it's going to be in my hand in a second. Um, <laughs> you can see it's a pretty massive bus. It's kind of cool. I was, like, thinking of 
tour buses is kind of like the inspiration here. And I'm wondering if I can rotate this and get it pretty close. Let's see. It's nice, but it's not perfect. Let's see, right about there. It should be hovering a little bit because it's a spaceship. So right about there seems to be about right. And let go. Okay, so this is the World Tours bus. I'm going to ungroup it because it's not necessarily, doesn't necessarily need to be grouped. It does still function as a grouping, um, but I'd really grouped it for as an asset so that it would work as an asset. I then made this guy here, which was for our world spawn point, but we don't really need it. It is currently tied into our respawn script below the planet, so there is that. But what happens here is you spawn in at one of these random spawn points. So there's like all these different places on the bus you can spawn in at. So if I press forward, we'll appear in one of these chairs randomly. And then you can like look around. And honestly, I think this is so cool. So hopefully you guys like this design. There's a little bit more I need to do on the design here, but that's not what we're here to work on. We're here to work on animation. And so you can see Oculus has his little pop here, which is so cool. I uh, deleted two of his tacos, so it looks like he ate two of his tacos, which is kind of funny. And then uh, if you walk up to the door, when the world is started specifically, I'll go script and play the world, we can see that the door opens up nicely. So you get one of these falcon wing doors, and then it closes after you leave, which is pretty cool. I also love it says Horizon World Tours in space. So I <laughs> thought that was pretty funny. Ah, buoyancy of water. Hmm. Wonder what that question is. Buoyancy of water. All right. So I think the first thing I need to do is partner Oculus 410 bop, bop, bop <laughs> with the Lake So 5 bop. Here we go. Nice. Make them about the same size. Yo. So these are like, I want to put these on the tour bus so that they represent the characters of Oculus and Lakes as tour guides at World Tours. So I thought that was kind of a cool idea. So then I'm going to go ahead and hit ungroup. And once this is ungrouped, we can kind of maybe make it a little more efficient. I don't know if I'm going to right now. Uh, oh, it's multiple groups. Um, <laughs> let's, uh, oh, it's a selection of 70 objects. Never mind. We're good. Okay. Nice. Okay, there we go. This looks good. And yeah, at some point I might come back because these are so many objects. Um, it can be a little expensive on your world capacity. And so I just have to be mindful of that as we're going to have a lot going on here. We also need it to be a 32 player world, which makes this so much more complicated. Uh, so <laughs> there we go. There is our little Lake So 5 and Oculus 410 bots. So cool. Whew. So. Yeah, those are made with the uh, 3D primitives. Isn't that insane? Sadie Chan built these uh, just by hand. They're, I, I don't know what the if the price will remain this, but they're $50. And I just think that is such a good deal for such great talent. Uh, and really appreciate her putting those together for us. Um, let's see. Okay. I'm like, I'm afraid to like get started on this because I want to do a good job. So... Wish me luck. Here we go. Make sure everything looks good on the camera. Did I hit recording? I did hit recording. Okay, so we are recording. That's an important step. Woo. Here we go. Shake it out. Today is a very special tutorial where we're going to talk about animation. And this animation is going to be step by step how you can create really cool story told animations in your world. So for instance, we're in this kind of cool world where we have started here on a little like bench. This is like an interstellar bus stop. And you can hop on the tour bus over here. If we walk up, you'll see that the this opens. I need to fix that a little bit better. And once we're inside the bus, you can see we got a little couple tour guides here. We've got a little spot where people can stand to lead the tour. You got a little viewing area. But these are some really cool bus seats. You can also see out these really nice windows. 
And so what we want to do is make it feel like you're going on a tour. So I'm not getting twisted around here, but we want to make it feel like you're, we really want to make it feel like you're on a tour bus. So you're seeing things passing by. There's like stars and it's interplanetary experiences. I probably should put in something on the roof so you can see like outside the roof. Um, but we're going to work on all of the design elements later for today. We're just focused on animation. And so like, this is a really cool animation where we open the door and that's pretty sweet. And, uh, if you want to know how to do that, comment in the chat right now and let me know because I can show you how we can do that as well. But if we get into build mode, what I wanted to show you here is that we have this whole little like pedestal where users are seeing themselves like just getting on the bus and they're getting ready to leave. And so when you spawn into the world, you actually spawn into these 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, these 12 little seats here. And so when you spawn in, you start here. And then you don't actually start out here. So that was part of the reason this doesn't work as well. It's meant to be like you exit and you don't get back on, which is part of the idea. Um, <laughs> but what we want to do is imagine that the story is you take off from this bus stop. Everybody's just boarded the bus. This zooms past. And then we arrive on this moon or something similar. And when you arrive, you're then like on some sort of base Maybe you can teleport to other planets. Don't really know at this point. Oculus brought in his son from the current world tours world. I've made this flat version because when you're on the world itself, you don't necessarily need the other half. And so in my animation idea, it's like you animate this getting bigger, getting closer, and then you land on top of it. And then it's actually this when you exit. That's kind of the idea um, because this is lower capacity and we're going to be using asset spawning perhaps. We'll see. <laughs> and then the, let's see here. We have this respawn trigger. So you can kind of like think that the players are never going to leave this cube. All of the animation happens around it. And so I want to start with kind of like the basics and then we will continue progressing past that. So first thing I'm going to do is introduce animation. So animation in Horizon Worlds can be as simple as just grabbing an object, pulling it, and recording that animation. If you've never done that before, you just click with your right index trigger. You can then press forward or press with your right index trigger and then pressing to the right, you can grow your cursor, which would allow us to select all of these objects, which is something we're gonna need to do because we wanna animate this whole thing to move. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all of this. And once I have this entire area selected, it looks like I've just finished selecting it all. We can then group it together by thumb sticking to the right. Now, once this is grouped together, when we put our hand inside, you'll see that we can push forward towards the properties, which brings up this properties window. In the bottom, we have animated. When we click on animated, we get options to record the animation. And the animation we want this to do is to slide this way. So that is our ideal animation. We can then hit stop. And then you could even have this start on world start and you'd see it do that. And so that gives you an idea what this animation looks like. Hmm. I'm debating whether we use that. Maybe we'll use that. <laughs> it's not terrible. So I'm going to go ahead and turn play on start off because we're going to trigger this via script. Also note that there are options in here for like continuous motion, back and forth, um, speed of the animation. So you can make it slower, like 0.5 speed. I'd prefer to script our animations and we will be getting into that, but just kind of like showing you some animation basics here to get us started. Okay. Now when I think about my animation, it's going to be a long script. There's going to be a lot of steps, a lot of pieces that are going to be moving. Like this door needs to no not be able to be opened when we're in motion. So I have to make sure that trigger gets disabled when we're moving. And so we're going to go start by going to our build menu, going to the gizmos tab and pulling out a script gizmo. Okay. Now on the script gizmo, we are going to name this animation controller. So um, if I had multiple scenes, I might call this scene one, but I'm hoping to only have one scene animation controller. Okay, there we go. So then when the world is started, we don't want to use this. We're going to have something else cause this event to happen. So we're going to delete this for now. We will need it later, but not right now. So then what do we want to have happen? <clears throat> if you're new to... If you're new to scripting, it's 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to think how do I want to say this. If you're new to scripting, in my personal experience, I prefer chronological thinking. So like I think about this from a chronological perspective, which and there's a lot of pieces in here. So just kind of like take it piece by piece. If this is your first time writing a script, don't worry. This is just a great exercise to start getting familiar with a lot of the different controls and possibilities. And there is so much more you're going to unlock later on in your scripting journey. But for now, we're going to start on the variables tab where you can create variables. Variables can be like numbers that are changing, but in our case, it's going to be objects that we're moving. And so if we click on this button, we can reference an object and then we'll give it a name and this is going to be the bus stop so we're going to call this bus stop there we go and then we click confirm and now the thing is this animation controller is a script but it's not attached to anything so there's no way for us to reference that yet and so what i like to do really early on is pull out a pyramid shape and this is really good for whenever you need a control shape. So I just make it into a pyramid and then I like to set it on top of the script that it is running. And then I'll open up the properties panel. And then from the properties panel of this pyramid, we can then make this not visible, turn off collidability. This is just making it more efficient and also just kind of keeping it hidden from users. And then down here at the bottom, we can attach the script animation controller. So now that we've attached that, you can see there's a reference pill for the bus stop that we want to reference. So if we come down here to our bus stop and open up that properties panel again by pressing forward on the thumbstick, we can then see that there's this group reference. We can find this group reference pill down here in the bottom right. I'd like to give this group a name. So we're going to call this bus stop group. B U S. S-T-O-P <laughs> group. Don't look at that as an acronym, okay? And so we're then gonna drag the bus stop group pill. I wanna do that one more time just for the video. Boop. I'm trying to clear that out. Click X, please. Maybe. Maybe. Open and close. There it is, okay. Then from the bottom right, we can grab the bus stop group pill, dragging it and placing it into the empty pill slot. Once that's connected, you'll see that the name fills out over here. You can even see this wire connecting it, which will move to the position of the bus stop once you close that menu. And with this setup, it also makes this animated. Now this cube will not be animated, so we can click none. And this is just a way to save a little bit of animation capacity. It's very small, so if you forget to do this, no biggie. We'll go ahead and click X to close out of that and we can head back to our script. So now we have the bus stop and let's say we wanna play that animation 10 seconds after world start, just as a demonstration. We'll head to the events tab. And when world is started, we'll say send an event with a delay, which gives us a way to delay the onset of this event. So we said we wanted to wait 10 seconds. So we type in one zero and then we're gonna send this event to self. It's called my event, which is okay for now. And then up here above, you'll see when event is received. Dragging that over, by default, these are my events. So they've connected, right? So this is sending my event to self. And then when my event is received, we can then do something. And over here, you're gonna find this tab called actions, which has this magic wand symbol. When we click on that, you can scroll down and you will find play animation. Play animation refers to the animation that we recorded on that object. Now by dropping it here, we can play an animation but it's not happening on self, it's happening on that object we had referenced, which is the bus stop. So we'll grab this pill from the variables tab, dropping it into the self slot. All right, so with that set up, in 10 seconds, that should start moving. So I'm gonna hop on the bus and see what it looks like. Bye! Any second now, and it's gone. And so if we had stars moving past us, this probably would start feeling like we were actually moving through space. So let's continue working on this animation sequence and then we'll start queuing it with a trigger. All right, I'm gonna take a quick moment to read your chat messages. We've had 20 votes, great job you guys. If you haven't voted yet, be sure to vote. We have it currently tied for bowling, air hockey and snap to grid. Very exciting, so keep voting. Um, looking at some of the questions here, how can one sell their assets in Horizon Worlds? Uh, not currently possible. There's definitely like you could set up your own website and do something like that, but it's really easy to like give things away. So people who have sold assets have found that people have been like giving it to all their friends after it's been purchased one time. So I would recommend doing like commissions where if somebody needs something, you're building it for them and you're getting, you're like only getting paid once for it. 
Um, although I hope in the future we will be able to sell assets, but currently that's not a thing. Um, let's see. How do we get in touch with them? Oh, the shoes. I If you go to my, pay, my Facebook page for those... Um, so we're talking about the little characters. This is what the shoes is referring to. He's referring to these guys. Um, Sadie Chan... I tagged her on Facebook on my post. So if you go to facebook.com slash alex.d.chandler, you'll see my post. It's public. And um, you can then click on the link to her f- profile and send her a message. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, absolutely fabulous. You probably can also message her on here. Let's see what else we got. Can someone post a link or name? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. I don't see anybody else having done it. So give me one second shoes. I'll do it. Um, let's see. It is say D Chan and Facebook. Uh, go to switch account. Sorry guys. Just one a moment. Oh. Go to my profile and copy link address. And there you go. Um, that is a really, oh, it's too long. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. One second. <laughs> uh, I just wanted the link, not the Facebook converted link. There you go. So there it is. And go ahead and try that out. So let's keep going through those messages. What else you guys got to say? Um, discrepancies between VR and Web3 to Web4. Uh, I don't know what to say about that. Um, I don't know anything about it, so I can't really comment. I'm sure I pay you outside of the world on Etsy or something, and then they send you the world with the model. I paid her via uh, MetaPay. I don't know like what other people are using, but I like MetaPay. Um, moving to NFT and smart contract. Okay. Yeah, probably. What up, 100 Animations? Great to have you. Okay, I have done <laughs> with all the little messages, but keep voting, you guys. We got our 21st vote, and it's still a three-way tie, so we definitely need some more votes coming in. Okay, we have created our first... I'm going to go back to the video, so we're going to pick it up right here. We've created our first animation, and if that's as far as you want to learn is just like doing these steps of things, the next thing we could do is create a new variable and this would be another object reference, and we could call this reference stars. S-T-A-R-S, enter, confirm. So if we had a stars reference, I'm gonna build some stars just so you can see what this would look like. So let's go and, man, I wish I had stars on me right now. I don't think it's in my asset library, is it? Please sort. Starfield generator, I brought it, I brought it, yes! <laughs> okay, so, um. I'm not going to get into the specifics of how this works today, but it's in the video asset pack. It's not currently in the asset library, but you could make this by hand um, or you could grab it from the asset pack if you have it. And all you do with the Starfield generator script is you just attach it to a text object. And once it generates the star field for you, which should happen instantly, I think I have to hit play world. There we go. So we've got our stars. You then duplicate out a copy, select this, let go, and it'll generate another set of stars. That one generated poorly, but this one generated a good one. And basically you just create a few sets of stars. And so we can select. And once we have four of these, I'm gonna create, that's a nice one. There we go, that one's a nice one. Okay, so we got a bunch of star packs here and I'm gonna delete this one. And so what you were seeing happen is that I was setting the default by duplicating the text object, it sets the default star pattern so that you can remove the script from it so that way it stays that way. And so it's a pretty cool script. If you have access to this script, I encourage you to use it. It is so cool. And um, there's a lot of things you could do with it if you modify it using some of the tools in there for modifications. Okay. Removing all of these scripts. There we go. And so our goal here is to kind of take these, crossing them together to create what should feel like almost hyperspace, right? We want to really make it feel like you're warping through space. And this is a cool start, but it's not nearly enough. So I'm going to have to... First of all, make this bigger because it's kind of hard to see. And then let's see how we can do this. I'm 
thinking we rotate this a little bit harder. So these are just at a little bit more of an angle because I want this to be a pentagon shape right there. Pen yeah, that's what those are called, right? <laughs> like, is that a pentagon? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so there we go. So if we were inside of this, you can really start to see this looks pretty decent. And so then what we could do is grab this, group it together, and now we have our first series of stars. Now, if we duplicate this and slide this forward, we can then rotate around this axis and create another series that's kind of like not identical. Um, it looks, so that way it kind of feels like these are moving. And then we could grab both of these, duplicate, slide, and now we've got a long stars field that we can like fly through. So you imagine like, right? So that's the animation we want to do. So now if I grab this here, group this together, we can then animate this as our stars. And so what I want to do is then slide this forward, kind of surround the ship in these stars. And I'm going to make this pretty decent in size, maybe bigger, bigger, and something like that I think is pretty good. We do need to slide it over just a little bit more and that's not bad. So then we're going to open up the properties panel for this and we're going to go to animated just like we did before. I'm turning snapping off so that the animation is recorded smoothly. I'm then sliding to the end here and getting as big as I can. I'm going to have to make this menu a little bigger. I hope it's not going bigger. That's okay. Um, so we'll hit record. And it doesn't start until we grab onto this. So as soon as I grab this, it starts recording. And we want to record this as a pretty fast motion. So there we go. And we're going to go ahead and then hit stop. We're then going to take the speed of this and change it to more like 0 0.05. And then let's see what it looks like by hitting play on start. So if I hit the play on start button, you can then see it's moving not very well. We're definitely going to want to use some scripted um, animation, which I'll be teaching in just a moment. But for now, this isn't terrible. That actually might look really cool. I'm kind of curious what that looks like. Let's go to point one. So it's still pretty fast, but not as fast. Um, and I'm almost thinking, actually, this is going to be crazy. So I'm going to hit point five, and then I'm going to turn loop on continuous. <laughs> Gosh, this is going to be bad. Oh, no, that's terrible. It's so bad. I, but that's kind of where my vision is. So let's turn play on start off. <laughs> and then what we need to do is you'll remember we have to open up the properties panel for this. If you press and hold forward on the properties pill, it brings the properties panel to you. We can then grab the top and then you can shrink it by pressing left to shrink it down. And then if we zoom in here right next to our pyramid, we're going to open up the pyramid again. And then we have to fill out this empty pill slot. But a trick I wanted to show you in addition to what we did before is you can actually grab from this empty slot and drag it back into here. You'll notice that it takes the name of this parameter and tells you what it is as you're dragging it. So now we've connected the stars to this group. We can then close out of this and we can give this a go. Oh wait, we're not done. We have to write one last line in the script. So if we open our script back up, right here we had play animation on bus stop. We need to select this. Thumbstick to the right to duplicate. So we have just a copy of this play animation. You could have also re-grabbed it from the actions tab. And then back on our variables tab, we're going to grab the bus stop. No, excuse me. We're going to grab the stars and then drop that into the bus stop pill. And now we have two animations playing at the same time after 10 seconds. 10 seconds felt like way too long for this kind of like test animation. So I'm going to set this to be more like five seconds. And now we, oh, whoa, that was crazy. Oh my gosh. Okay. Stop the world. It's like, it's ready to go. Here we go. And the timer counts. Play and into play mode. And now we're sitting here and we're watching and then, whoa. Okay. It's not terrible. Like it's not great, but it's definitely not terrible. Woo. That's some, that's some crazy, like you might want to do a different shape for hyperspeed, but, <laughs> and the only big problem is we can't like, oh, whoa, oh my gosh, that is so cool. If this was longer, that would feel so neat. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> so as you can see, you know, we're like, we're getting closer for sure to what we want to do. Oh no. And we forgot to disable this. I'm going to jump into space. Ah! 
okay. Um, <laughs> let's go stop the world because that animation is playing way too many times. And what we want to do is kind of like we've started sketching out what we want this to look like. And I think we're doing a pretty good job. I'm going to delete this Starfield generator script because I only needed it that one time to make these stars. And so what we want to do is make sure that door can't open. So like this door should not be opening, right? <laughs> Hi, Izzin. <laughs> Hi, Tanya. <laughs> oh, great votes. I love your votes. Keep them coming. So good. This trigger allows the door to open. And so the way this trigger works is it says when a player is inside of it, open the thing. And if you open up the properties panel for this trigger, you'll notice that it's enabled by default. And so what we want to do is disable this trigger once the vehicle is in motion. And so we're going to need to reference it. So I'm going to leave this open. Excuse me. We're going to need to reference this trigger. So I'm going to leave the properties panel open and head back to the script. And on the script, we can open that again. We can go to the variables tab where we're going to create another object variable. And this one is going to be called door trigger. So I'm going to abbreviate that with trig. So now we've got door trig, click confirm, and this will allow us to reference that door. So then what we need to do is say, once this event happens, that's causing these animations to play, we need to make sure the door isn't functioning anymore. So back on our actions tab, we can scroll to the top where you'll find set trigger detection. By dragging this over, we can now set trigger detection not to true. If we click this one time, it turns to false, but it's not self. The trigger is not self. Self is again that pyramid shape there. And so we want to go back to the variables tab, grab the door trigger pill and drop that where self is. Now with that referenced, we need to make sure it's actually referenced by opening with the properties panel of our pyramid. And then down here, we have this pill slot. We're going to bring this down with us down to this properties panel and then grab the trigger reference pill, dropping it into this empty slot. Okay, wonderful. We have now connected to the door trigger and now the door will not be able to open once the animation is started. To try this out, we'll hit play. I'll then head into play mode. We'll open the door and then we'll back out of the door and then we start moving. And so if I walk up to it, the door no longer opens once we're in motion. We should also make sure the door is closed but that is kind of a little more complicated, so I don't think we're going to get into that specifically. Okay, cool. I'm going to go ahead and stop our animation here. And I want to maybe take a step and look at these stars from a perspective of what if we had stars spawning in front of us and they spawned in the center? So right now we've got this giant hole, but what if we spawned them right here and then flew them out past it? So it was at this point when it flies past, but it starts here. So the motion is kind of like conical. Conical? <laughs> so I think that's what we're gonna wanna do. And it's gonna be a lot more intense on our um, rendering. It's not nearly as affordable as these text objects are. So you could use both and keep both of them. Hmm, I'm like thinking about it. I'm also wondering, there's another option here. Ooh, let's try both of these. Let's just. <laughs> I'm so excited. There's so many cool things we can do with this. So um, I have an idea for a different type of animation that you might want to use. So let's get above everything so we don't accidentally touch this stuff. We could also lock it by pressing the lock button down here. So that's this button button, bottom button. Um, I'm going to leave it unlocked in case we want to delete it or something later. Now, there is a gizmo on your build tab called particle effects. There it is. This particle effects gizmo has some really cool things in it. And I was thinking for hyperspace, it would look really cool to use vertical lines. Let's start by turning looping on so we can see what this looks like. And while these aren't super spectacular because they're so big, you could imagine this being like that, feeling kind of cool. But I have a better idea for these because this is a good start, but if we scale this like that, we can now get these off on the side. I'd like them to be skinnier like this and longer like that. Oh, but then it requires so many. So what I'm thinking of doing is we duplicate this up 
like that and then a raid tool to make a giant <laughs> this is so expensive um we're gonna have to talk about this in a second <laughs> but that's so cool look at this <laughs> right like oh my goodness that's so amazing how much does that cost in animation complexity if we go to our uh, capacity tab we can see that this is costing 19%. That's 19% complexity. So, um, not super reasonable. So I'm going to go ahead and hit undo. As cool as that was, I think the reality is we need to do either every other one or my preference is actually to make this double the height. So if we take this right here, select this one and then stretch it to twice the height, this will take up half as much complexity. And so we'll select this and then duplicate with a slightly larger angle. And now we get half as many of these to make the full sphere, which if we then look at our complexity now leaves us a 9%, which is not terrible. We have a lot of animations, but that's still 10% visual effects. From a perspective, it looks really cool. Like it still looks awesome. So, I uh, <laughs> I think this is pretty nice, <laughs> but I believe we need to go with a conical shape. So this is like a cylinder, but we want to be a cone, and I don't know what to do about that. So my idea to make a cone is to grab one of these. So bear with me here if this isn't making a lot of sense yet. And so if I grab this, I'm going to go ahead and delete all of these real quick. Okay, and then if we make this about that size, go up a little bit, grab this, we can then set our angle, so our snap angle, to look like that. And I want it to be a little less intense, and you'll notice it goes up to flat if I go any higher. To fix that, I can go to my settings tab and change my snap angle from 15 degrees down to 5 degrees. I love 15 degrees, but 5 degrees should give us a much better angle. So I'm going to just then lightly rotate it. It's really hard to get this right. As you can see, this is already off over here. Um, so I'm going to have to try and fix that as best as I can. Looks like I got it. So there we go. We have a 15 degree angle there. And... With that 15 degree angle, the way we can get that copy down to the bottom easily, and just for now, I'm gonna go change this back to 15 degrees. Select this guy, then select this guy. And then what we can do is rotate around this. So if I grab duplicate, I can then rotate 180 degrees. And now we have two like this, and I can then let go. There's now two of these, so I'll delete this. And with those in this perfect shape, what I can do is delete this again, then, um, sorry, wait, undo that. I need that for a second. Select from here to get the orientation of that, then select this guy and this guy, clicking one time and dragging through this. We now have this selected and it's horizontally oriented. I'm then going to group it together and we can then delete this. And now what we can do is rotate this, the angle that we want, so that angle looks pretty decent, and then array tool one time, or two times it looks like, and now we have a pretty decent cone. The problem is the cone isn't like perfect, so what we wanna do is ungroup all of these. So just by putting my hand in the center here, I can open up the properties panel and then hit the ungroup button. There's also a control on my hand, but I'm not very good at it. Um, so looks like there's one more left, ungroup. So then what I wanted to do was drag these forward. So if I select this and then drag this to here and then select this and drag this to here, I'm going to keep dragging it. In fact, I think maybe the right approach might be to drag it to this point so that they're all snapped to this um, spot. So I'll select this, grabbing from this uh, arrow, drag, and then with snapping turned on, I can snap to over here which will now give us this intersection to create the correct cone. And we're just gonna do this quite a few times. So just drag and snap and then drag and snap and then drag 
And hopefully, when this is released as a video later, we've fast forwarded through all this. <laughs> oh, okay, a couple more. Almost done. Select. Snap. And select. And drag. There we go. Okay, so now we're starting to get a pretty good cone. That's not... Wow, that's pretty unique. So what I'd then like to do, our orientation wasn't saved from prior. So I'm going to pull out a cube, this cube here, and then using snap, I can make sure it's level. Then I can select here, select all of these, deselect, and then putting my hand inside, thumbstick to the left to group it together. We can then delete this cube and try placing this around our ship, our ship and see what that looks like. So I'm trying to get the right orientation here, thinking right about there, maybe a little bit to the left. And then if we go into play mode, tapping once up, that's interesting. It's like, I'd like the lines to be smaller, but it costs twice as much complexity. But I think from like in the back, it's kind of neat because it's got these kind of like stars, flying by almost almost oh i don't like it oh i really wanted to but i don't it's just too thick up there they're too thick i think yeah i mean we could drag them further out huh i'm gonna keep thinking about it so the question you're probably asking though is how do we make those play via script rather than playing on world start and so well, I'm not super happy with this yet. I will show you how we do that. Now, unfortunately, I don't think it works in a way where we could go to like more tab and um, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't even exist here. There's just no way to animate this, I think easily. So I'm gonna drag this back with us and you'll see what I mean. So if we go open up our script and create a reference called object VFX and click enter and click confirm. You'll see that the VFX, we'd go to our actions tab, scrolling past animation, you'll find play visual effects, which we can then drag over. And then when we try to play visual effects on that grouping, it won't work. So we'll open up this and drag this empty pill down to here to this group. Okay, now it's referenced, we're not animating it. So I hit none, and then exit. And we would want to first stop the animation. So if I hit stop visual effects on VFX on world start, we're gonna see that it's still playing. So we go script, play. Yeah, unable to stop. It's just, it's not even able to play. So in five seconds, you can say unable to play. Yeah. Um, and so unfortunately, the way that's easiest is to reference all of those manually one at a time, which if you had even more would be like a bunch of visual effects. And this is the code you would write would be play visual effects on that visual effects and then reference each one of them. But there is an easier method. And so the way this works is we're going to delete this. We're going to delete this and then we're going to go back to our events tab and create a new event called when event is received. And this event is gonna have a custom name called play visual effects. Now, there's a few ways you could do this. This could have it manually listing out all the visual effects you wanna play so that you could call this event anytime you wanna play those visual effects. In our case, we're gonna use it in a completely different way. So on our values tab, we can grab a comment and this comment is just here to let us know what's going on. And we're gonna say these are listened, uh, or actually I'm gonna call this connect, connected to on FX. So the FX will be connecting to this play visual effects event. And if that doesn't make any sense to you, no worries, I'm going to show you how we do that. So let's see, I'm going to close out of this and then we're going to open the properties panel for this selection here and we are going to ungroup this 
And I think the right method to get this to look a little bit better would be to drag them out that way. But for now, what I wanted to do was just show you with one of these how you could set this up. So grabbing this script or grabbing the property panels for one of these visual effects. Now you'd have to do this for each of the visual effects, but we're going to create a new script and attach it. So on our build tab, go to the gizmos tab, pulling out the script code block. Excuse me. Let's try that again. From our gizmos tab, we'll go ahead and pull out the script gizmo. And then we're going to open this up and call this VF, VFX stars, because we might have other different visual effects. So with VFX stars, when the world is started, we want to go back down to the bottom and grab connect to event, which we're going to drop into here. And then we're going to go to our variables tab and create a new object variable. And this object variable is going to be called control. And then we'll click enter and click confirm. Now what we want to do is grab this control pill. And what we're doing is connecting the control event, drop down and select the event called play visual effects to the local event play visual effects. Now we can go to our events tab. And from the top of our events tab, we can grab when event is received and then drop down and select that same play visual effects. This will now be received when the control event sends play visual effects to self. So when play visual effects are received, what do we want to do? Well, we want to go to our actions tab, scroll down to the play visual effects. And because this is running on the visual effects, we play the visual effects on self. So with that, we'll close out of here. We will then go to our visual effects, select the visual effects stars from the dropdown. We now need to fill out this pill with the reference to the controller. So we open up the properties panel from here, dragging the pyramid pill into this empty pill slot over here. Now with that connected, this should work. So I'm gonna just double check my script over here and it does say connect to visual visual effect. Oh, in my event, we need to send play visual effect to self. So over here, we grab send event to object, drop that at the bottom, drop down and select the play visual effects event. So we're now sending play visual effects to self because this is being listened to by the stars. The stars will then receive the play visual effects event and play visual effects. Okay, so we only have one of these running this. So I'm gonna open these up and this is the correct one? Weird. I'm going to delete everything but the one that's got the event on it, which is this one. And then it seems to have lost the reference. You see how it says empty? I'm not sure if that's like a visual bug or not, but I'm gonna just drag it over again. So we'll grab pyramid B and drop it. There we go. Okay. So you'll notice that whenever you reference stuff, it becomes animated. We can just click none because it's not actually animated. Um, this pyramid specifically. Now, I did forget one other thing, which is that this is currently set to play on start. And so we need to make sure this is not set to play on start. And there we go. Okay. So with this set up, we are now ready to test it out. So we'll go back to our script tab, hit play, head into play mode. And up here, any second, it should, oh, whoa, that actually felt kind of cool. Oh, that was kind of cool. Hmm, might be onto something here. And so we saw that it worked, very nice. And so what's really cool though, is once you've referenced one of these, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the world so we're not working with stuff that's scripted. And then once you've referenced one of these, we can then do some really cool stuff like grabbing this cube, and by placing this cube here oriented with the world, we can select the cube and select this and then duplicate and rotate. And that's not exactly where we want it to be, but let's try that again. One second. Okay. So we have this cube and we want it to rotate in a sphere around the cube. So we got to make the cube big enough to encompass the entire visual effects and then select cube select this and then duplicate and rotate like that. And then array tool, thumb sticking to the right, which then creates that cone that we wanted. And now we've got a whole loop of them. We can then delete all these cubes. And now these should all play 
So script, play world, head into the world. It's weird that, oh, there they go. Okay, so in a few seconds, whoa, kind of cool. <laughs> it's not as bad because they're not clustered in the center. But yeah, interesting. Interesting. So yeah, that allowed us to play all of those visual effects at the same time because they're all listening to the controller. So kind of neat. I'm going to go take a pause there and read you guys' messages so that uh, feel free to keep commenting, asking questions and all that. Okay. Okay. Messages say, hey, Lakes. Oh, I already responded to that. Hi, Izzin. Uh, <laughs> I'm here. Thanks for getting my request so early in this tutorial. Ah, you're welcome. Great to have you. Thanks for asking. Um, that is so cool. It does something to your brain. <laughs> Rainmaker. Nice. Thank you, Rainmaker. Appreciate it. Lots of people interested in bowling and air hockey. Very cool. Well, I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, I think the next part of this is we just should show how to continue making this a little bit more detailed. So checking our time, you're doing a quick time check. Um, I found out from Oculus today that every week he's going to be starting at 6 p.m., which is in an hour and a half. And so we are going to be ending so that we can go watch the uh, Horizon live show. But um, that's why we started a little bit earlier today. And what else did I want to say about that is I may or may not start early more often or maybe not. I think the two hour stream last week was a lot of fun because it was just like jam packed. It was great. Um, I really enjoyed how that went. <laughs> can you do one on swimming i don't know i'm like swimming is hard charles i like i'm afraid to touch it um like what's your familiarity with um vectors and directions and comparisons like dot products like basically how good are you at your trigonometry have you done like a lot of trigonometry one day yeah i'll keep thinking about it um it's definitely been planted as a seed and maybe I can find an easier way to do it. But right now I'm just like, it's a bunch of math. <laughs> um, okay. Let me take a sip of water. Feel free to keep voting, but I think that poll has basically become really clear. <laughs> you guys have uh, bowling on your hearts and minds. Oh, there's a secret thing back here. This was not a product placement. As much as I'd love to be sponsored, it's not a sponsor. In fact, I'm going to put it out of the screen so you don't know that I'm having that. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Okay. <sighs> <clears throat> There's so many ways we can take this and I really want to wrap it on like a super high note. So An animation is nothing without sound. And so I want to continue talking about this, but we're going to run out of time and we could spend literally hours on this. So what I want to do is kind of talk about some more possibilities here. Actions tab is where everything is found. So definitely like start taking a look at some of the stuff here. Like you can play and pause sounds. You could pause an animation or stop an animation, which resets it back to its original state. We can then like do other things. There's um, these are more complicated up here. So I wouldn't worry so much about this. The top has some easy ones like hiding and showing objects, setting object visibility and collidability, coloring an object. Um, so there's some really cool stuff in here. Playing a sound is really quite simple. You just drag play sound over. And just like before, we create a new variable reference for this sound called sound effect. And then we can reference that. I'm going to also delete this one since we're not actually using that. But really what you're seeing as far as animation goes is there's these two components. There's the action that happens and then there's the variable to reference that action. And then the most important part is going to this object that's running the script and referencing that object that plays the sound or plays the animation. And so there is another way to do animation. And so I want to start with this bus stop because I think this is the easy one. And so this bus stop we animated by hand. So over here on the bus stop, we created a animation that we recorded. 
I'm going to actually go ahead and ignore this animation. And so if we don't use this animation, it never gets used. We can do something entirely different. And so what I want to do is say, what if we want to move this smoothly at a perfect state, same pace from here to here, right? Just move it backwards. In fact, I want to move it back really far, like way back here. So I'm going to go and pull out an object that will reference. And so this is just a plain old cube. And by placing it here, actually, um, let's not use a cube. In fact, let's go to our gizmos tab and pull out a text object. Now these are a little bit more expensive on your animation capacity, but the benefit is you can label it. And so this is gonna be called bus stop bus stop end position. And so this is where we want the bus stop to go at the end of the animation. And we have this as a reference and it even can be visible since this is out of sight of where the animation is taking place. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this for now. And then in our script, we're going to create a new variable, which is also an object that references that position. And so we're going to call this bus stop end position and click enter and confirm. And now with this object reference, we can move the bus stop to the position of that text object. So here we had play animation. We're gonna delete this, then head over to the motion tab where you'll find move, <laughs> motion over time, no, uh, motion over time. And we'll grab move to over time. And it's important to use move to, not move by. Move to allows us to define an exact position in space. We can delete this vector, which is a position vector. And what are we moving? Well, we're not moving self, so I'm gonna delete that as well. And back here on our variables tab, we can grab the bus stop, dropping that into the object that's being moved. The position is operators tab. From operators, we can find things that get information. For instance, on an object, we can get the position of an object. Dragging that into the position value, we can then grab the position of the bus stop in position object. And so this is that text object we created. Now, how fast do we want to move? We can type this in. We'll go ahead and say five seconds, actually more like 15 seconds. There we go. And with all of that, this will function. We just need to reference everything. So opening up our object here, you can see we need a reference for that bus stop end position. So I'm going to head back over to our text object, opening up the properties panel. We can then grab it with our raycast and bring it with us over here. And then I'm going to grab this reference pill, dropping it right here. Now with that referenced, we can then see the motion happen in a few seconds, right? So it should work. If the world started, the world might not be started. Yeah, the world's not started. <laughs> so I'll go script, hit play world, and then head back into play mode. And we'll see this move in just a moment. Here we go. There it goes. Oh, and it's going. Nice. So it worked pretty well. We're moving at a really slow pace, so that didn't really match the stars. And, but that's okay. So you can kind of like get an idea that you could have made that faster or like there's a lot of ways to use that. And what's really cool about using a reference position, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the world for a second. Excuse me. Hmm. What's really cool about using a reference position like this is that if you wanted the bus stop to move down instead of just like straight back, you could slide this down and now it moves at a downward angle to this position. And so there's lots of ways to just move this or if you wanted it to move further away, you just slide it back further. And so that would also make it move a little bit faster, right? So this position allows us to very quickly choose a different position that we want it to move to, which is really nice. And so I really like using references like that. Okay. The next step is how do we make something feel different, right? Like these stars move way too fast. So if we go to our animation controller and think about it with the bus stop moving slowly in the beginning and then faster, what if we move the bus stop over, let's say 20 seconds. And we imagine those first five seconds are that kind of slow period where the spaceship is just taking off slowly. Let's not play an animation on stars. So we'll go ahead and delete this. And let's try using move by. 
I know I said don't use move by, but in this case, I think it's okay. So we're going to grab move by over time, dragging it into here. And then what are we moving? Well, we're moving the stars. So we're going to go to the variables tab, grabbing stars. And then this value is how much do we want to move it by? The time is going to be over three seconds. Um, I'm actually going to do five seconds. Yep, I think that's fine. So we're going to move the stars by an amount over five seconds. That amount will be based off of the object itself in world space. And so we want it to move this way. So if we open up the properties panel for this stars grouping and then go to the attributes tab and we can see the position value here. If I drag this back, so if I put my hand inside of this, grabbing this red X and then grab this arrow and drag it like that far, we can then see how much that moved. So it moved along the X value. So I can hit undo. And now it's 61 and it went to 57. So we can undo and redo to see those values. And so 61 to 57 is a minus four on the X. So I'm gonna go close out of this. And then over here, we know that we wanna move, and this is X, Y, Z by minus four in the X and the other two stay the same. So minus four, press enter. And that should give us a nice slow star movement in the beginning. And then five seconds later, we want these stars to speed up and we want to hit hyperspeed, right? That's when the play visual effect should happen. So we're going to go create a brand new event. So we're going to grab when event is received. And this is when it's time to start naming our events. Remember originally we called this my event. Let's drop down and give this a custom name. And we're going to call this S1 for like stage one and click confirm. Then we'll make sure that this my event dropdown uses that same S1. And then this my event is part two. So we're going to call this S2 for stage two. S2, press enter and click confirm. And so what we want to do is send S2 after five seconds. So remember up here we have this. We can actually just grab this thumbstick to the right to duplicate. And now we have it here. We can then drop down and select S2, which will then cause S2 to happen five seconds later. And what would we want to happen in S2? Well, we want to send this play visual effects. We want those visual effects to start playing. We want the door trigger should be false up here. That's fine. Um, and then send S2 to self. Oh, right. We want to move the stars, but we want to move them way faster. So we're going to grab the move stars and then thumbstick to the right to duplicate it down here. And we want to move it not by minus four, but more like by minus 40, right? We want to really move these stars past us. And the time frame should also be a lot faster. So let's like make it or a lot longer, right? So minus 15 seconds. So maybe these need to move even further, like maybe by minus 80. I'm not even sure. We're gonna have to like play with these numbers to see. And so with this, we have kind of a good starting point to have the stars start slow and then speed up. And that happens in S2. And then you could make it like an S3 where maybe they go even faster or like maybe they completely disappear. So right, say we go when event is received, drop down, we're going to call this one S3. And so I kind of have this idea and you'll see what I mean. So we'll call this S3 and click confirm. And then hyperspace clicks in at S3, which is when we send play visual effects, right? So that's when all those particle effects start up. And then we move stars, maybe even more by another minus 80, but over like five seconds. So if there's any stars left, they just immediately disappear, right? And so that seems even cooler. <laughs> I'm curious to see how this plays out. There was one thing I wanted to show you though, which is right here. Remember previously we were duplicating S2 into here. I want to grab the send event with delay to show you how to do that again. So the way we cause these additional events to happen, these like stage one, then stage two, and then stage three is with send event with delay, which causes the event to happen after a delay. And so we'll drag that in here. And I also, yeah, well, sorry, before we get to that, so then we can then drop down on my event and select stage three, which we want to have happen after 15 seconds. So we'll then select 15 seconds. You could type it in or we can just thumbstick to the right to duplicate it into here. And now stage three will happen 15 seconds later. Now, what I wanted to do was actually think of this as kind of like a three stage process that are five seconds. So I'm actually going to change this back to five seconds and then thumbstick that into here. And then the last thing I wanted to show you was thinking about this more chronologically than what I've done here which is yes, the bus stop moves immediately. Yes, the stars move immediately, 
the door trigger, I kind of want to think of that happening like at the very beginning. Now, this doesn't change the actual order of these things happening because they're all pretty much happening at the same time. But for my mind thinking, okay, when this stage starts, the door is immediately stopped. The bus stop starts moving. The stars stop moving. And then S2 will happen five seconds later. That's kind of like how I want to think about it. So I organize it in that way. So I think about it in that way. And then S2 happens. Then S3 happens. And then after S3, we have play visual effects because that's a part of S3. Now, this happens immediately. See, there's no delay on it. So it happens immediately. And I think it's time to try it out and see what it looks like. I'm kind of excited. So we'll go ahead and then hit play and then go into preview mode. And this should start in a few seconds. So there it goes. The stars are moving, but you can't really tell. And then there they go. Oh, they're going in the wrong direction though. And yep, that's funny. Okay. Um, but then if a few seconds later, the hyperspeed should kick in and it does, right? It does not. I might've deleted those, did I? Did I? Hmm. Peculiar. No, I didn't delete them. The script is right there. Hmm. A couple of weird things happened there. So we're going to go ahead and hit stop. And I'm not sure what to go and test first. <laughs> um, we sent play visual effects. We send S3 to self after five seconds. We send S2 to self after five seconds. Minus 80 was wrong. Hmm. What did I do wrong? Let's open up the properties panel of this and just check that everything's referenced correctly. So this is another reason like using the end position is nice. You can kind of like create multiple positions. So you could think of like, we could put a position one and position two. So why did this slide incorrectly? Ah, I think I know what it is. We might not be oriented with world space. So I thought we were oriented with like X and Y axes. And so if I open this up and we do that one more time, what we might see happening here is that multiple attributes are changing. So it was minus four and minus something else. So under our position. So I'm going to go and slide this over again, like about there. And there it is minus four. This is at 161. So I'm going to hit undo. Ah, yep. It's minus four here, but it's plus six. So it's kind of moving at a diagonal. Minus four plus six. And then I want to double check that this isn't a negative number. No, it's not. Okay. Minus four plus six. So to fix our stars up here, we want to keep these kind of synced, right? So we go minus four plus six. Now we could go get like an actual amount. Um, but what we're going to do is type in minus 80. Now we know this is 20 times. So six times 20 would be 120. So we'll type in 120 here and then duplicate this down into here. Oh, that's a, that's a little more than 120. <laughs> there we go. And then why weren't the visual effects playing is the question I have. So I wanted to check this script first and it is correct. It did work earlier. So if I open up the properties panel of this, it's still referencing pyramid B. It's not playing on start. It is set to loop. And let me see if I hit play world, head into play mode. And then a few seconds, this should work a little bit better. Things do feel like they're moving. Oh, the stars are really going in the wrong direction. And I, I don't even know what to think about that, but okay. Bye stars. <laughs> um, oh, the visual effects are working. At least one of them is. I'm not sure why the others aren't working. That might be like, I need to leave the world and come back, but it is somewhat working. So not super concerned about that. Um, so what I would say with the stars is we should just be creating more reference positions just like we did for this and then use that and move to that position rather than moving by. But moving by is never a good idea. Like I said in the beginning, so I should have done it, but I did. <laughs> um, I think this is where I want to end this. I'm just like thinking.
I am going to add one more piece. So let's come back to it in a second. Let's add one more piece at the end and then we'll wrap. Let's see if you guys had anything else to say. Okay. I'm not currently home. Welcome, Craig. Great to have you. But I would love to share one of my diamond shapes to you for snapping reference for your star animation. Ah, well, thank you. Is everything okay one script? Um, is everything on one script? No, um, there's two scripts, actually. Um, but we are trying to keep almost all of it on one script, which is something worth kind of like talking about. So let's, let's dive back in and then. Dion asks, is everything on one script? And kind of like we have the visual effects stars on their own script, right? Like we showed that a minute ago, but for the most part, we're keeping everything on this one script. And that is sort of okay. If you have a script like this, where it's going step by step, it's not terrible to keep it like this. Um, it is definitely hard to understand. And I would encourage you to go to your values tab and bring over these comments in here and kind of talk about what this is. It's like um, delay of five seconds on world start and then describe it. Like, what is this one? You know, describe S1. What makes S1 special? What is stage one? Stage one is like the slow start. Stage two is like approaching hyperspeed. Stage three is hyperspeed. And so like having that in there could really help later on when you're looking at all these numbers and thinking, what in the world did I do? It's like the numbers are nice for creating these in a sequence, but the comments are nice for understanding what's happening in that sequence. And then over here on your variables tab, it can very quickly get con convoluted with a ton of references. And so like making sure you have really good names is so important and making sure those objects are also named well becomes more and more important the larger these animations get. And so the last thing I wanted to show you was that we could create a sound effect that is played in sync with this event, like what's happening here. And so to do that, if we open up our menu and head to the build tab under gizmos, we can grab the sound recorder and then open up our sound recorder and record a sound that is something like tours will commence in five seconds, three, two, and welcome to outer space. We are now leaving the dock. We'll be soon approaching hyperspeed. Please fasten your seatbelts and stay seated for the duration of the ride. And then we'll continue like with whatever else is happening in the animation. So I'll hit stop. And so whatever needs to be said can be said there. And then you make these animations happen in sync with the audio recording. You can then play this animation with that. And so remember how I said you could reference sounds. So I'm going to show you this. We're going to go ahead and keep this not global. So make sure global is turned off. The distance is fine to be like 26. You can imagine this coming from like a PA system. And then we can place this in the front of the bus, right? So we'll come up here, placing it right up in here. There we go. That's kind of nice. And then on our script, we need to reference it. And we'll create a new object variable. And this will be called narration one, because you might have multiple narrations, right? So we'll click narration one, click confirm. And then this narration starts with the start of the animation on world start. So then we'll go and grab on our actions tab, play sound, and then reference not self, but the narration one. So that way that plays when world is started. So if I hit script and play and then hop in, should be able to hear it. Not hearing it, but we should be able to. Sounds can be a little buggy, so I'm just thinking this might be a build mode bug that would be like fixed when I came back. Like if I reloaded the, the world and came back. Um, not sure where that went. <laughs> okay, here it is. And let's go and hit play. Tours will commence in five. Okay, it is playing. So I'm going to go ahead and hit script, stop, and play. So weird that it's not playing. It might be on world start that it's having the issue. So let's um try moving this. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I did this. Like I said, I do this all the time. I forgot to reference it. So we'll drag our uh, properties panel down there so we can reference it. Come on. Come with me. Oh, I need to stop the world. I'm like, why isn't it working? 
Uh, it's stopping the world is so useful. I highly encourage you to get into the habit of stopping the world whenever you're doing something. It is so nice. So we'll open this properties panel, grabbing the sound recorder reference. Ta-da! Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Horizon. I shouldn't have blamed you. <laughs> I'm just so used to bugs. Hit play and then hop in. Tours will commence in five seconds. Three, so you can hear it coming from the two, front and up here. welcome to outer space. We are now leaving that. the dock. We'll be soon approaching hyperspeed. Please fasten your seatbelts and stay seated for the duration of the ride. And then we'll continue like with whatever else is happening in the animation. So I'll hit. Yeah, so lots of little things to fix here, but I think I've given you the tools to kind of like know how to do this. Um, if, if you're confused like this door, <laughs> I walked into the door when it was open, but I didn't let it close. And so honestly, for this one, I'd leave this as disabled. And then, um, so I'd actually start it as disabled. Let's stop the world. And then set the default to be off. So it starts as off on world start because everybody spawns in here anyway. And then on our animation, when we get to the destination, instead of setting detection to false, I'd set it to true. So you might imagine you arrive to the destination after S3 is done. So we create like a new event, say when event is received, just like before, send S3, we'll duplicate it down, drop down, select a new event called S4, and then we'll set this duration to be more like 10 seconds. And then actually I want to keep this fast. I really feel like the five second duration just makes this feel like we're you know quickly traveling through space and so we'll drop down select s4 and then we're no longer setting trigger detection to false we're only setting it to true so when we arrive we set trigger detection to true this has actually fixed that bug that bug could also be fixed by sending an event to the trigger that says um close like you could send an event called close that would just close the door and so there's definitely some other ways to do that or you could set the trigger detection to false sooner definitely a lot of options there um, the other thing that I wanted to do, yes, we have one very last thing I wanted to do, which is show you how to make this happen. Not when world is started, but when a button is pressed. And so I'm going to create a new object variable and this button is going to be called leave, leave. <laughs> yep. We're just going to call it leave. Oh, but it's a trigger. So I should call it a trigger, leave trigger. Definitely important to tell you what it is. Excuse me. Now, previously we were using when world is started to cause this event to happen, but instead we want to use when this trigger is entered to have it happen. So we're going to go and grab down here. You'll find when trigger is entered by player. Now this isn't ideal. I'd recommend using connect to like we did earlier, but the reason this works so easily is because we only have one trigger. And so when trigger is entered by player, we're going to play sound and send S1. And then when world is started, we need to connect to that trigger. And so connect to event is, we got to do it the right way. I'm sorry. We're going to do this little, <laughs> sorry for the sidestep. So there's two ways to do it. Let me show you the easy way. The way I wanted to do it is just like quick and dirty where you just grab listen to events and you just listen to the events on the leave trigger. And this makes it so any events that happen on that trigger get sent to us as the controller. This is dirty because if something else happens there, it can cause our entire animation to break. So the correct way to, so what this would do is it says, listen to events on leave trigger. Then when that trigger is entered, we'd cause this to happen. But the correct way to do this, the really like the right way is to grab connect to event, drop this in here, and we're connecting the leave trigger event. We can then delete listen to. And then the trigger enter on leave trigger will be connected to a custom event called S0. So this is the starting event. So S0, click confirm. And then when trigger is entered, it is no longer used. So we'll go back up here and grab when event is received and then place this here. The event is the S0 event. So we'll go and create that. So new event named S0, click confirm. But it's important to note that because this is a trigger enter by player event, we need the parameter for the player to come through. Otherwise the event will not be received. So we'll click player and then type in P L I D and then click confirm. Now this event will be received in place of when trigger is entered. We can then drag these up here and delete the trigger enter event. That is the correct way to do it. So now I've showed you how to connect to a trigger. The next thing to do is to pull out a trigger and make a button that you can press to start the tour. So we'll pull out a trigger 
this is going to be a red button because all buttons should be red. Um, I don't know if I agree with that, but for now, <laughs> there we go. It's a nice red unlit button. And here's a nice trigger to go with that. We'll then open up the properties panel of this trigger. Heading over here, we can then reference it on our pyramid. Press forward and hold to bring the pyramid here. And then we'll drag this trigger into the empty pill slot. Okay, those are now connected. We can then close out of this and take this trigger and set it down below. So I'm gonna select this and bring this down onto our bus. It's a little big, so we'll make it a little smaller. And you know someone's gonna press this. I don't even need to put a label on it. People like to press buttons, so that's gonna get pressed way sooner than we'd want. We'll want to make sure this trigger is a little closer so it doesn't get accidentally pressed. And then because it's not really needing to be collidable. I'm turning collidable off, which will make our world run a little bit more efficiently at a higher frame rate. There we go. So that is pretty solid. Um, the next thing we want to do is I wanted to show you one. I, there's so many cool tricks I want to show you. So like right now we connect this event on world start, but like what if we didn't want it to be playing on world start like we don't want people to just load in and press this button we want it to wait like 60 seconds so um we're gonna go ahead and start this as disabled and then go back to our event then back on our script we can create a custom event and call this when event is received and we'll call this start delay i also want to quickly note never create an event called start calling the start event causes when world is started to play. So you want to always call it start with a descriptor after it, like start delay. And then we can grab send event with delay, drop down, select start delay from the drop down. And then when start delay is received, we want to go back to our events over here and set trigger detection of this trigger, that leave trigger we created to true, which then enables it so you can press it. And that delay for us is gonna be another five second delay, just for the demonstration purposes. You could make it 60 seconds so that you have to wait for people to arrive in your world before you can leave. And there we go. So we're gonna try this out. One cohesive experience. It's not gonna be perfect, but here it goes. We head in, we'll press the button early so you can see that it doesn't work right off the bat. Now, after a few seconds, we can press that button to leave. Tours will commence in five seconds. Three, two, and welcome to and outer space. See, we are now leaving timed. the dock. We'll be soon approaching hyperspeed. Please fasten your seatbelts and stay seated for the duration of the ride. And then we'll continue like with whatever else is happening in the animation. So good. So good. And ideally, we'd see these visual effects going off. I'm not sure why they're not working, but that's okay. Um, oh, and the door opened. See, because we made it to the end. So theoretically, we've arrived. So we'd move some other objects here that allow us to arrive here. Ah, oh, so cool. I feel like we've really, really shown so much today. And I hope this helps you create some really awesome animations in your world. I know we've just briefly scratched the surface. So if you have questions about this, please leave them in the comments. You know, maybe network with some other people who can like maybe teach you a couple of things. Maybe you can teach them a couple of things and try making some of these yourself. I think there's so much possible here. So many stories we can tell. And I look forward to seeing what you create. Thank you guys so much, and we will see you in Horizon. Bye! For those just joining us, um, we just finished a tutorial. So uh, feel free to keep leaving your questions. We are not ending. the. We got so much left to do. I'm so excited. But uh, wow, we just finished that one. That was awesome. I'm going to quickly read through you guys' messages. Can't wait to exercise. What? Oh, oh. I uh, I recommend trying Horizon out. There are so many nice people here. 100 animations. I have one quick question about the timer. If I were to hit the pause button a second time, the timer would start counting again, right? Ah, no, it wouldn't. Um, <laughs> no, it wouldn't. <laughs> You'd have to um, either press the timer up button or create a new event to start the timer. Um, let's see. If we head in, I'm going to go and... I don't think I deleted that world yet. So let's head back over there real quick and I'll show you that. It's very, very simple. And edit world. Okay.
I plugged in my computer to a cable that was not plugged in. So that computer's dead. <laughs> okay, 100 animations, here we go. So we're back here at the timer that we talked about at the beginning of this tutorial. And in here, you'll remember that we had created this pause event, which had caused this to pause by canceling sending event loop to self. Um, if we wanted to re-enable, I'd recommend creating another trigger. If you really want to pause play button, you could then create a Boolean. I don't really want to get into that because it's so much more complicated, but more or less to create a play button, we just duplicate exactly what we did before, create another trigger, create another object variable called play trig, and maybe, maybe. Okay, play trigger, confirm, reference that here, connect that to a local event called play, and confirm, and then we need to duplicate this. We did, and then we'll drop down, create a new event called play, P-L-A-Y, enter, confirm. And then from here, we don't cancel. In this case, we actually send the event. So back on our events tab, we then grab send event to object and that event is called loop. So we send event loop to self and that is it. So then down here, we would just select this, duplicate down a copy, uh, not perfect, but just for sake of doing this extremely quickly, we'll type in P-L-A-Y, enter, and then back on our text object, we can then reference in that empty slot for this trigger, which is the play trigger. So grabbing that and pulling it out, trigger, reference, and we'll reset it. So it starts from the beginning, stop and play. Coming on in, you'll see that we can now hit play, pause, and then hit play again, and it starts counting down, pause, and play. Nice. So there it is. I'm going to update that asset to add these. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be updated anytime soon, but um, we'll get that updated eventually. So one day it'll include these buttons by default, but for now, that's how you add them. So thanks for asking. <laughs> Whew. <sighs> Let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Sorry for the loud fan as soon as we come back. It's crazy how you can't hear it. The isolation of audio on the Quest 2 is insanely good. I'm going to use the restroom real quick. Keep voting in that poll because this is your last chance to change the tides. Um, I see bowling has just this landslide. Um, so if you're watching and you haven't voted, this is your last chance to go vote. Uh, I'm excited. I, I would love to do bowling. I know air hockey had a lead earlier. Uh, lots of people want to do snap to grid. And if we don't get to these today, don't worry. I roll these over to next time. I did want to add swimming to the list because um, I think it is a good idea. It's just so complicated. I just give me a week or two weeks to think about how we could do it easier. Because right now the method is so complex and it just requires so much math. Um, but the thing I love about Horizon is there's and like and scripting here is it's not necessarily requiring us to do it the right way. Like there's so many other ways. So excited to come back to that. Let me use the restroom. I'll be right back. Keep leaving your questions, and we'll be right back to it.
There's like this mysterious ticking noise. I don't know if you noticed that. That's from the world we're in. Um, so super funny. Uh, looks like the votes are in. I mean, it is for sure bowling. I'm ending the poll. So exciting. I'm looking forward to doing that. Whew. Any other questions? No, no other questions. Cool. Well, thank you guys for keep asking them. And um, we're going to get started with bolding here in just a minute. But there was two things I wanted to say, which is I realized the issue with the move by. I thought for sure move by was using world space coordinates, but it, it looks like it's using local space coordinates. And if you don't know the difference, so the world has axes, right? Like we were moving, we were looking at the, the movement in world space, how far that object moved in world space. But it appears that move by was taking the direction of that object and saying which which direction is it moving because I was like this isn't working right so like if we had looked at the axes that we wanted to move along then we could have taken say it was the x-axis or the, well, it wasn't the x-axis it was the um, for sure it was y-axis maybe I don't know anyway it was moving along one of those axes and if we had said move along that axis on the local objects orientation it would have worked um, so move by might not be as terrible as I made it out to be. I just didn't fully understand why it wasn't working. Um, but I really do love the move to because it makes it so much easier to say, like, this is exactly where I want it to move to. So there is some benefits to move to, but um, there's both. Whew. How's everybody doing? Was the last tutorial good? I don't, I don't know. I can't, I can't tell how it went. My computer died. I've only got the chat, which is nice, but... Um, not a sponsor. <laughs> I'd also like to hear from you, like, with bowling, is there anything specific? I mean, a third of you, over a third of you, that's um, 12, 13 people voted. What is it about bowling that you're, like, really interested in? Is there a specific mechanic of it? Is it just, like, seeing how these objects interact and kind of, like, making them interact correctly and more realistically? Um, would love to hear. Do you all hear the ticking noise? Uh, oh, am I just behind on the chat message? Tick, tick, <laughs> tick. <laughs> I forgot how it goes. <laughs> Where's the sound of the mysterious ticking noise? <sighs> okay. Rhubarb zero. Okay. I'm back in. And the ticking noise can stop. We should have paused the timer. <laughs> it was counting down how long it took me. Oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> okay, so it's got that over there, and I want that to be over here. So we'll do that and hit uh, resume. There we go. Fix that. Nice. Um, let's see what else we want to do. We want to go and do bowling in a new world. I think that's fine. So we'll create new world, blank world called bowling and create. <sighs> Would anybody like to um, do some bowling testing? Is there anybody who wants to be the tester of our bowling mechanic? Restore. There we go. Full screen this. And come back over here. If anybody is interested in being a uh, tester of this, please, um, you know, comment your Oculus username so I know. And I think we're good. I think there, there it is. Nice. Okay. Um, trying to think what else. Yep. Okay. We are all caught up. I just didn't feel like I was. I was caught up with y'all. There we go. Um, let me know if there's any issues, you know, with audio or anything coming in, but everything looks good. So I think we are all set. Okay. <clears throat> Double check that looks decent over there. It does. Uh, oh, and I wanted to change this from top chat to live chat. So we see all the messages coming in. Nice. Okay.
Before we get started with the filming of this video, I'd like to just start with some of the visual elements. Um, sometimes we include that in the video, which is nice. I felt like there might be some items in here. Game items. Is there a bowling pin, bowling ball, or anything? Um, lawn bowling set might be what we want to grab. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, let's see what this lawn bowling set looks like. Horizon, you scare me. Is it any good? It's, an, it's not great. Got lots of things. Let's try it out. Okay. Grab, roll. <laughs> it's not very satisfying, is it? <laughs> we could, we can definitely do better. Right, we can definitely do better. Is there a reset button? Set up pins. Okay. That button was nice. Wait, the pins aren't there. Set up pins. Oh, because I didn't stop reset play the world. I told you that was a good habit to get into. And play. <laughs> okay, and try that again. Boop. I'm like, this. this feels like I can throw overhand which is kind of a problem, definitely. And I think this might be a problem with, um, Craig, I will get you in here. Manage collaborators. And for today, yeah, sure, I trust you, Craig. Craig is, you've been here too much. Oh, invite as editor, there we go. If anybody else would like to join, just go ahead and comment your Oculus username. First come, first serve. Um, so, if I hit this button, it should work. Yep, okay, so it works that time. So we definitely need something like that. You can grab this out of your asset library if you just wanna use this, but I think we can definitely do better. Switch to left hand? Interesting, that's a cool feature. But see, the problem with bowling in VR, we should do an intro. <laughs> I forgot, we should do an intro. Okay, switch to right hand, reset. Hey everybody, today we're looking at bowling and not not this one. If we head into build mode, you can actually get this out of your asset library by heading into assets, the uh, official asset library, and then going down to game items, scrolling down just a little bit, you're gonna go ahead and find lawn bowling. Where's lawn bowling? There it is. So you can pull out this asset if you want this one. But I thought I'd just quickly show you what uh, Horizon Meta they've put out, which is this one. You can throw it. You know, it, it honestly feels like I'm throwing like, does not feel like I'm throwing a bowling ball. Look, look how far that ball goes and how fast. It's just not perfect in my opinion. Like bowling should be more like that. I think a little more like that even. Um, and it almost feels better to do overhand, which is problematic. So this is like in VR, I'm sitting down. I got these like armrests in my way. So bowling, unless I'm standing up, not ideal. Uh, I mean, we could stand up. Let me try it. If I stand up and grab that, that feels a lot better. And if this was a full lane alley, it'd probably be a lot more fun. I think it's really cool that they have this <clears throat> button to switch to left. Welcome, Craig. Uh, <laughs> I think it's really cool that they have this button to switch between left and right. But in our build, I just want to have kind of like the return section that you see balls return to. And then the setting up pins function is pretty decent. I do like that the button goes down. Um, they're just using a scale too. You can see when trigger is entered, it scales to this position. When trigger is exited, it scales back to here. And I don't think it's, yeah, it's it's done pretty well. Oh, thanks, Buck. <laughs> so let's see. <laughs> I thought the ticking was me. <laughs> no, no, not you. <laughs> Okay, where do we want to continue from here? Now that we've seen how Meta did their bowling alley, let's go ahead and set up our own bowling. And uh, I think we'll just fast forward through this, but we're going to do some bowling pen creation, some bowling balls, a lot of design work. So just kind of stay tuned and watch this all come together. And for our video editor, I'd really like to overlay that while I'm saying it. So like they see it as I'm saying 
watch it all come together and then we're like back with whatever i say after this <laughs> so cool beans it's 523 so we still got some time definitely want to do this in the fastest way possible um craig do you want to help me design a bowling alley uh, maybe if you could sure. do a bowling pin and a couple bowling balls and then Sounds i'm gonna try and do the alley itself appreciate you man yep and we want to think about this being like a wooden floor is pretty common so we'll go style wood if you guys have any thoughts suggestions questions please feel free to leave them i can see everything as you guys are typing it so feel free to interact as we're going through this um appreciate the engagement it's really nice to have you guys all here all right hello chris great to have you Okay, I'm gonna grab this and we wanna put up kind of like a back area where you can like see the potential pins getting clawed out of, so like that, and then duplicate that, think, make that a little bit higher. Again, I'm just talking to myself. If I'm alone in build mode, I literally talk like this all by myself, so, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe I'm weird, but that's okay. It's nice to know think... somebody else is like that. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, let's see. I want to make this kind of metal, I think. And I want to make it colorful. I really do like adding color to worlds, so I think kind of like that would be nice. Um, not a wood tone, though. We'll go with something more this even nice and then I want to make this larger and aligned world there we go that's kind of nice okay and then what I would like to do is create some sort of thing that comes down and cleans up the pins like really over replicating the reality of a launcher and so i'm thinking we can create a quick animation that will be something like this coming down and then sliding back and it'll use physics so this will just slide down to there then bum, bum, bum. this has got to go up to this height and then what i need to do is then take this duplicate a copy so for those watching the live stream this is kind of cool because you can see some of the ways that i would animate something and so what i'm doing is i'm making this um non-visible non-collidable this becomes the midpoint so when i select and group these three objects together you can see that the midpoint's right here so that way we can stretch it and scale it so that it'll hide up inside of here and i realized i've kind of not made this high enough so i'm going to ungroup it and then move this upwards so it hides inside of here um, with this being the part that's where it goes to. So with that in mind, that should work just a little bit shorter and then redo the scale to size that correctly. There we go. And then we can snap that to there, select, select, and group. And then for the color of this, I feel like this could be kind of more of a pink tone, also metal, and maybe a little bit more bright, like that. Maybe not metal, actually. Let's try plastic. There we go. That's nice. So then you can imagine that kind of like scaling out of there. And we'll just go and leave this inside of this for now. Sorry for that. And oops, undo. And blue slide there we go oh but i uh i guess it wasn't there it is okay cool so that's going to be good for that and i think because we scaled this first because we set the scale to one we'll be able to do this cool trick uh we'll note that the x is the one that we want to scale to point one there we go and then we can scale that later to make it visible. Okay, and then slide it back. And then in the back here, we wanna use an unlit object so that it looks like a 
empty area back here. So we open this up, make this non-collidable, and gizmos, color, unlit. Okay. So that will look like they're just getting slid into some back area that you won't be able to see, which is going to be nice. And then... The next thing we need is some pins. So he's working on pins over there. They're looking pretty good. Keep it up, Craig. And I kind of want to put in some barrier. So I guess we need a gutter, huh? Yeah, we need some gutter balls. Um, so to do the gutter, we're going to snap this into here. Snap this into here. And then create one of these, which will look like a pretty decent gutter. And don't really want this collidable, but I guess it's okay for now. We'll uh, set that up like that. And then what I really want to do is move this all up because it's, there we go, much better. Now we can go downwards. So for this, we then just drag this along the whole stretch here. And I really want this to be more like that. So that way I can slide this into it. So it kind of falls off like that. That looks nice. And then we want to make that look like metal. So I'm going to go grab a metal tone. Metal, shiny, aluminum maybe. Nice, maybe even uh, darker a little bit. Less metal. Okay. And then I kind of want to slide it in just a hair further. And slide it up to snap it pretty close to this. I'm not snapping it because I want it to be... Um, I don't want it to Z-rip on the edges. So I'm just kind of like eyeballing it. There's also this tool called Finesse. If I press forward, I can finesse it into place, which makes it a little easier to get it exact. Problem is if I come in here... It's probably flickering on the edge. It doesn't seem to be, which is good, but I suspect that was a little too much finesse. So I'm just gonna slide that down just a hair further. So by pressing forward up, I get that finesse tool. And then we'll do the same thing to slide it in. There we go. I like that, okay. Nice. That looks good. Is this non-collidable? It is collidable. Let's make this non-collidable and then we'll put up an invisible wall here so that if it falls in, it just falls off. So we'll duplicate this, open this up, collidable but invisible, and then snap this to here, scale it to here, and then maybe just like that. So it could potentially bounce up a little bit, but not out of here. There we go. And then we'll scale this up to the top and build a roof on here. So that way these things can't get out. There we go. And I also want to scale this over to there. There we go. So that's looking pretty good. Still have quite a bit of work to do on finishing up this bowling alley. We don't have lines on it, which I'm not sure if I'm worried about or not. Um, I'm also going to duplicate and slide this over. And so here's the trick for making things perfectly centered. Once I get this right about where I want it, right there, I can then select this and let's actually get this over here too. So we know that this guy snaps right to there and that's now perfect. And then when I select this, select this, select this and this, I can then snap this to the center of this and then grab my slide tool over here. Also pressing forward towards finesse and then slide that down right to about there. In fact, that's way too close. Too much good finesse right there. Um, so back up to finesse tool and like that. Okay, so now that's perfectly centered. Apologies for that light amount of Z ripping there fixed. Okay, so we've got that in place. We do have this problem there. So we'll just snap that down below so it hides that area. And the problem is we want those balls to disappear into the back. So I think what we need to do is actually take this, slide it out more to here actually, 
And yeah, I think that's the answer. So slide this out to here and then slide this all the way back into our uh, unlit black area here. So that way it looks like it's kind of fading off into the nether <laughs> regions here. I'm not sure if that's the right name for that, but there we go. Perfect. Next up, there's a couple little gaps in here. They're so small, I'm not sure if I'm going to worry about them. It's on an invisible object. It's not going to cause us any problems. So that looks good. Um, these are non-collidable. And the reason I made them non-collidable was so that we could put in just um, flat surfaces so the ball would fall into it and just roll at the bottom. And so we're going to grab this, make this invisible but collidable, and we're going to snap this onto here. There we go. And then slide this all the way over down into here. There we go. And then duplicate this over to here. Now I think what we want to do to make sure that this always rolls down is put this at a slight incline downwards, which I don't think bowling alleys do. Maybe they do, but uh, our bowling alley is going to. You might not notice it though. So I want to make this really light. So snapping off, grab this, and just, if I move my hand up, I can really make sure my hand is viewed by my headset just really lightly. There we go. So just a super light incline there. And because I still want a level surface for people to be on, I'm going to snap this one here and then slide this up to be at the same level. And we'll snap this over to here, snap this over to here, and then we can snap and slide this into here. Now, the nice thing with this is if I select this paint tone, I can open up my style tab, sliding down to turn off a line object and select there and there, and now it's connected. So it looks super cohesive, even though this is downhill and this one's not downhill, like you can barely even see it. So the goal is that Craig's bowling ball over here, great job, Craig. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Craig's bowling ball over here will uh, roll without that. So what we want to do is select these three pieces he's built for those, deselect the ball, and make sure these are set to non-collidable. Maybe. Okay. And collidable is off already. Good job, Craig. Open up the properties panel on the ball, and that one's perfect. So this will do a pretty good job. I want to make sure these are set to unlit. I believe they are. Another great job by Craig. Thanks so much, dude. You're like the a really great sous chef. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's what they call people in Horizon, but uh, that's what you are to me. You do an amazing work. Boom. Look at that. Nice bowling ball. So we'll select this. I hope that's a compliment because I mean it as one. <laughs> um, <laughs> Absolutely. So anyway, we've got our bowling ball. We want to make sure it fits into our little gutter there. I feel like this bowling ball might be too big, but let's go check it out in person. Oh, it's not bad at all. Okay. So then we're going to open up the properties panel. And this is about where we're going to need the tutorial to start in. So I think... We're almost done with our design elements here. What do you think, Craig? Are we good on design? I think we're I think we're where, where we need to be. Yep. Cool. Um so if you are open to it, I would love to have uh, a couple couches put in play. <laughs> Does that sound like something you'd be up to creating for us here? Sure. Cool. Uh <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what? Uh, <laughs> I was thinking it would be nice to have like a couch back here just to kind of like for the seating area. And um, you're like playing with friends, right? Yeah. Cool. Oh, I forgot to build the ball return area. That's what I needed to do. Let me do that real quick. Also, let's see if people are commenting anything. Um, I watch a lot of your videos. Hey, thanks. Appreciate that, Chris. All right. We're going into build some sort of ball return. Now, we've got this set up. 
So it'll roll along with it. It shouldn't fall out of that, but it might. So I'm gonna put this up along the sides just to kind of make sure it doesn't fall out. Uh, I really don't think it could fall through that. If it does, we'll fix that later, but there we go. So we got some extra rails up there. Um, I did kind of want to put down some text objects here, but I don't know what they're supposed to look like. Um, so if you know what I'm talking about, it's the sort of um, dash symbol like that, and then it would be painted black. And you could totally do this with a singular text object too, but they look like this. And then you do one that's like that, and then oops, slide it over, slide it over, and then it's kind of how they go. I think I've got an idea of how we could do this so that it stays at the right distance. Oops. So I'm thinking if we grab this and we place this here and then grab this, place it here, and then a ray tool, then do the same thing from this side. And then delete this, grab this piece here. We'll uh, snap that there, duplicate, snap there, snap there. Yeah, feeling pretty good about that. I think that they're kind of, kind of right. Somebody tell me, oh, is that kind of right? <laughs> <laughs> kind of looks right to me. We'll group it together and then, even though I'm center snapping it, it's not centered. So I'm gonna have to eyeball it, unfortunately, but I guess I could actually get it closer. Oh, right. And that was um, at an angle. So we should actually snap it to the center of this board so that it's aligned and then slide it up just a hair and then slide it back over here. Then I think it's too far to the left, so we'll slide it just a hair to the right. Okay. Hair more to the right. Okay. Um, that feels okay. Not opposed to this being the lines for our <laughs> bowling alley. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, that'll do. Whew. And um, we've got a bowling pin over here that looks pretty good. I'm gonna inspect it in a little bit, but I'm expecting it's pretty fabulous. We'll go scale it to be the right size real quick. Looks nice. And the last thing we needed was that ball return, which I was thinking of just grabbing this and then making this a lot shorter. And so this would be the ball return area, which we would run a purple cube like this along. And then make it a little thicker. And also right there. Oh, I guess we could just slide that up. Yeah, slide this over and then slide this one up to here. And then ball return comes out of the center of that, slide it up just a hair. And that's not bad. Then we want to have just kind of like a cylinder that's unlit black that we had before. Scale it up. And now it'll look kind of like a hole that this is coming out of. Maybe make it a little bit smaller. And then I'm just gonna eyeball that into place. I know it's not perfect, that's okay. Nice. Okay. I also want to make sure that this is non-collidable, just for efficiency's sake. So double check collidable's off. Okay. 
And then the last step was to grab one of these and use this as the bottom of our ball return. Oopsie daisy. Select, slide that to here. And then there should be some sort of like bowling ball area right here where it returns into. So we'll uh, try to create some semblance of that. Okay, that's not terrible. It's not perfect, but it's definitely not as bad as it could have been. Um, <laughs> so we'll have the balls return there and then they get put into that. And the only thing that I think could make this look a little better is if that went down to the floor like that. Okay. Whew. All right, everybody, we are back. Uh, as you can see, we've got our little uh, bowling thing here. We got a pin, we got a ball. We've got some bowling alley action here. If we head into the, we can't get back there, but if we could get back there, you would see that we have a little black area. This is non-collidable, so objects will just fall off the back end. Um, these are, are also non-collidable. You'll see that we've got um, some invisible colliders to make sure everything stays within this area. Um, you can't really throw the ball super high, but maybe we want to fix that, make it so you can throw it a little higher. So we'll do one of these and just stretch that up to here. And we'll do the same thing right here. All right, with that stretched into position, the only place that could be problematic is right here. Theoretically, they can't throw that high, um, but you could put another non-invisible, non <laughs> but you could also put another invisible collider right there, but I think it'll be okay. Um, oh, I guess people could get back there. Oh, right. Hmm. Hmm. You know, that was the benefit we had was people couldn't get back there. Hmm. Okay, we'll go back to this. This, this works. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, people shouldn't be throwing it that high anyway, theoretically. So what I'd like to do then is get this bowling ball. And one thing you can't really tell from here is this is at a slight angle just to make sure our bowling ball is always rolling down. So my goal with our bowling ball from the beginning is just that it falls really well and that it rolls always. So we're going to go to our attributes tab. Make sure it is a perfect sphere. You can see the scale is perfect, so it should work. And then if we go to the physics tab, uh, we want to give this a, yeah, wood tone should sound good. Behavior tab, make this interactive, grabbable, and physics, so both. And then gravity on it is on, but we're going to use custom gravity so that it falls really, really hard. So we're going to set this to 40, which is going to fall ridiculously hard. Nice. <clears throat> and then I didn't really like that sound so much. Is there a better sound? The physics material, oh wait, we'll get to that. Uh, the sound. Yeah, that stone sounds really nice. Okay, and then physics material, we want to make as a default to starting point. Hmm, super ice I think is the one we want to go with. And what this means is that just a slight amount of momentum should cause it to roll. So theoretically, if I grab this, I'm gonna duplicate a copy just for this example, let go of it right here, and it's sliding, very nice. It's gone, wow, look at that. It is picking up speed. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so super ice, not bad. We did find that this collider down here was a little too low, so we're gonna just slide this collider up. So we're just gonna go and grab it and slide up just a hair. And let's go check that collider again. See if that's a little better. We're gonna duplicate another copy of this ball and let that fall. Oh, that's perfect. Look at that. Oh, that is perfect. Problem is it's not rolling yet. Um, so let's see what happens if we grab this and give it a toss. So how is that? Whoa, you are so heavy. Okay. Oh, I hit my, but the that was pretty good. Um, that was pretty good. <laughs> uh, did you want to try this, Craig? Sure. 
All right. I'm going to have to. Oh, look at that couch. Nice. There's a place for us to rest. Don't forget bumpers, someone said. <laughs> Love it. All right. So uh, give that your. Oh, don't hit the pen. <laughs> oh, man. It falls really fast. But it's using um, gravity, so it doesn't fall realistically. Um, so to fix this. But I love the slide. I love the rotation. I feel like it's actually on a pretty good trajectory already. So I'm going to have you just kind of keep testing this as I keep making adjustments. So the first adjustment I'm going to make is I'm going to give it a ton of mass. I'm just going to throw the mass up really high. And I'm going to turn the gravity back to original uh, Earth gravity. So give that a throw. See what happens. Oh, okay. Um, it threw too far. Um, let's see physics. I just, I threw mass basically infinity. Give that another throw. Oh, was that, that seemed better. I don't know if you were trying though. <laughs> let me I give was. it a go. <laughs> You're like, I was trying, I swear. Okay. Let me rotate so I don't hit my desk and, right. oh, okay. You can like still throw it pretty hard. What? It bounced. It bounced. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you bounce it? Should not be bouncy. No bounce. How did you bounce it? <laughs> I do the same thing in a real bowling alley. <laughs> okay. Try this again. Try to prove that it bounces. I just I don't believe it. Okay, it didn't oh. bounce that time. Okay. Mine just keeps staying upwards. And I don't like that. It should definitely be going down. So I'm going to go change the gravity to be higher still. Maybe just not minus 40. Maybe more like minus 20. Um, I don't feel like the mass was doing what we wanted it to do. Angular drag, dynamic friction, static friction, bounciness, removing bounciness. Uh, okay, I'll <laughs> add 0 0.05. There is a little bounce. If you try hard enough, just a little bit. And that's just for you, Craig. Okay. So uh, give that a go. That seemed to look, that looked really good. Let's try that again. So a lot of this is just, you know, comes down to how do you get these physics properties? Oh, oh no. <laughs> well, <laughs> one of us is bowling correctly today. Uh, <laughs> Okay. That was pretty uh, awesome, though. Yeah, I thank you. In the air. Yeah, you know. <laughs> oh, gosh. And throw. Oh. No. Okay, there's something wrong here. I get, It's just going so high. It shouldn't be allowed to go any higher. Physics. <clears throat> drag, maybe. Maybe the drag is what we need. Do we need some drag on it? Okay, give that a go. What happens? Oh, jeez. It falls like a feather. That's not good. <laughs> you know that's not what we wanted we're going to turn that one off um hmm weight simulation when held let's put that on okay try grabbing that oh gosh <laughs> it like broke your hand give it a go again oh my goodness it's like Ugh. this is like the worst bowling <laughs> <laughs> you're like it grabbed the ultra Ugh. heavy one. Oh. But that actually looked really good. Okay. I feel like we're on the right track now. That weight simulation seems to really help. Okay. Try it again. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Your poor arm. <laughs> okay. And we're going to try that as well. Give me, give me a go on that. Okay. Here we go. Jeez, my darn wrist is going to break. You know, though, it felt pretty decent. Other than that fail, like it slows down really hard. I felt like we're on the right track. Um, Is that the drag, maybe? I don't know. I'd removed drag. There's no drag left on it. Maybe because I switched. Uh, we had it on super ice, which is probably negative drag or something ridiculous. And then I moved it to. It could be one of these, though. Hmm. Let's go and do, I'm going to have to redo this. 107, I have to start from scratch. Okay, so switch to super ice. 
So from Super Ice, we have this at 107 or so. No dragged adjustments, no dynamic friction adjustments, no bounce adjustments, position stiffness. Okay, everything seems to be good. Had a, had a little bounce there for you? Oh, wait, which one did I update? <laughs> I don't know which one I updated. I, oh, this is not the one I updated because that one's at 107. So duplicate this one and let's give that a go. Okay. Oh, that is so awful on my wrists. You know, I actually have this problem when I'm really bowling. My wrist just absolutely destroyed afterward. Yours slid nicely. Mine is just not doing so hot. Okay. Give me give me a go on this. Yeah, just slowing down really fast. That's got to be okay, so it's it's not that it's it's got to be the new properties we added to it. So we added position spring stiffness, position spring dampening, rotational spring stiffness, rotational spring dampening. Um I gotta remember how to use this. Torque applied to move the object rotationally. Um, torque applied to slow and stabilize the object rotation. Let's turn this up. Let me see what your wrist looks like. Grab that. That's less like wiggly on your wrist, right? Yeah, it's still pretty hard to hold it like you would aim the ball, you know? Yeah. Can you like push it with your hand? Maybe I need to go to the world properties. So under world properties, we can do, oh my gosh, I just remember saying, <laughs> under world properties, we can do can halides collide with static objects, turn that on. Um, I guess it's not a static object, but that's okay. We'll turn it on anyway. I want to try it out. Let me see. Oh gosh. It's like, it's hard. <laughs> it's really hard. You're like... Okay, underhand. Oh, oh, underhand. There's something to that. There's something to that underhand thing. Yep. Um, okay, it's my time to announce that Horizon Worlds Live is starting in just a few minutes. We're going to finish this. I'm not stopping, so you can hang out. <laughs> um, but Horizon Live is starting, so if you don't want to miss the guests and the surprise guests, Go check that out on Vidu Nights. That's Horizon or YouTube.com slash Vidu Nights is the live stream. You can also visit it in person at Horizon Live in Horizon Worlds. Okay. <laughs> with that plug out of the way, let's see. I can't. Oh, I can grab it with two hands. I don't. <laughs> I know it's not great, but. Hmm. That moves pretty good. You know. I kind of like it, but I also kind of hate it. So I think I'm going to turn off the um, weight simulation when held because it really, well, maybe we can adjust these properties to get it right. Position, spring dampening. I think we increase the dampening to make it so it does behave a little bit better. Right? No, it's just, it's just not going upwards because it's so heavy. So maybe I need to change the physics down. So I go physics mass down to like that maybe it's like it's better actually that that could yeah. be that could be it make sure i don't hit anything nice oh my gosh oh, yeah. that felt really good okay let's duplicate that let's have you try that out a hundred times uh two three four five six go ahead and throw some of those balls for me uh, <laughs> Craig, you got to grab the blue balls, please. <laughs> oh, no, I hit something. Also, sorry, children. <laughs> oh, no, that darn invisible wall is really getting in the way. We're going to have to raise that back up. There's just, they slow down so fast. There's another ball back here for you to try. Like, you can get a good throw in, but they are, they are, it's pretty easy to get a bad throw. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> It's pretty easy to get a bad throw. <laughs> this whole lineup of balls is just falling. Okay, and delete. There's only one ball left. Enjoy. Okay. 
Let's see. What do we need to do next? So I feel like we've finally got it to a point that I'm pretty happy with. You know, like if you guys are working on this, just keep adjusting these things. You might find that you're getting it closer and closer to being where you want it. I'm almost feeling like I don't I just don't know what it is. I don't know what's causing it to slow down. Um, it could be this weight simulation seems to be what it is. So there's probably something in here we could adjust. But I'm not sure. Okay. So the next step was to raise this ceiling. And yeah, so the ceiling is up. And I just want to make it so players can't walk past this. Totally okay with balls walking past this. Just don't want players to walk past it. Um, we could put in a respawn script. So you get like a ding if you walk past it, which would be kind of cool. Um, I just was wondering. Like there's an option in here for um, collision layer objects only. I just wish there was one that was players only because that would yeah. be so perfect. But <clears throat> sadly, that doesn't exist. So with that in mind, we're just going to let players walk down the bowling alley. All right, here we go. Hey, good ball. <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't cheat, I swear. Also, these bowling pins are grabbable. What is going on? <laughs> We're going to have to have a serious conversation about your bowling pins. Okay. <laughs> so, let's see. I'm getting lost here. There we go. Whew. For now, our bowling ball is going to start here. Yeah, I think I figured it out. Thanks for bearing with us, you guys, as we work through that. I have no idea how we're going to cut that into usable footage, but... Uh, oh, I love the way that ball lands. Okay, it's time to start some scripting. I think, well, maybe let's get the pins finished i fixed it you fixed it um yeah i pushed it over and it fell over i'm <laughs> it's okay i think if we did it this way though it's like oh okay not so bad okay i wanted to fix some of the physics um so whenever you're building an animated object you really want all of the objects inside of it to be non-collidable and so we're just going to open up the properties panel of this, make them all non-collidable. And once they're non-collidable, we can then go into... <clears throat> oh no, I ungrouped it on accident. Okay, sorry. Sorry, Craig. Um, we're going to select this cube, which represents kind of like the base of this and the orientation. So we'll select the cube first and then select everything else. We'll then group it together. And then once we get inside the group, we can use this cube as the collision layer for the pen. So we'll open this up and then make this collidable. And we're gonna make this only collide with objects. So theoretically, only the bowling ball will collide with it, which should be interesting. Um, we'll make it, oops, select this again, deselect that, and then maybe, ooh, and we'll deselect. Oh no, it came out with me. Select that object, come on, and then zoom it back into the group. Let go with, by clicking it one time, and then zoom out. Okay. So then on this cube, I was thinking about making it just a little bit thicker. So we're gonna go attributes, scale, go to 0.16 perhaps. Yeah, 0.16 is where it's at. There we go. That's gonna have a little bit more realistic fall. And then what we also wanna do is go into the, um, so we wanna make it interactive, give it physics, and that looks good. It falls nicely. But what we want to do is change the center of mass. And you'll remember that bowling pins have a center of mass at the bottom. And so we're going to change the center of mass. That's that uh, object there to the minus 0.2. And that has moved it to the bottom of the pin, which should make it a lot harder to knock over. And so now that we have our center of mass, we're going to then array a couple of these. And... 
Then we're going to slide these up to the same height. So we're going to have to stop the world because this is causing all sorts of issues. Stop. There we go. So select this, scale it up to here. Select this one, slide it up to there. That looks good. Can't even see this other pin though, which has me a little concerned. I don't think it exists anymore. Undo, 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 undo. Okay. I can't see any of them. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, yeah. the world is stopped. So now I'm going to duplicate this out to here and then array tool. And we want to slide these so they're at a decent scale, like right about there. And then I'm going to grab this one to keep equal spacing, duplicate to this one. Oh, try that again. Duplicate to this position, then array tool, delete the extra one that's in here. And then we know we want 10 pins. So we're going to duplicate this, but rotate it so that it's to there. Delete this extra pin and then do the same thing again. I know this is way too complicated, but it does <laughs> kind of work. We're going to need to reorient these two. So we'll reorient. Oh no, undo, undo, rotate. There it is. And then same with this one. And then what we want to do is for now, group these together so that we can then select these two. And we want to make sure these are centered with this. And so this is unbelievably difficult. So what we need to do is slide a copy of this over, then select these two, center it right here, and then slide these two back, aligning with this one. And now that we've got that out of the way, we can then select another set of two. So we'll ungroup this one, select these two again, duplicate and rotate, then uh, deselect this one, delete this one, and then do the exact same process. So group these two together, slide a copy of this over, then rotate this correctly, and then snap it to here, and then slide it, snap it to here. And like that, we now have our pins finally set up. And the worst part is I just realized they're completely oriented in the wrong direction because, uh, <laughs> you know, pins are actually supposed to be the other way around, but that's okay. So we're gonna go set these up over here. Give this a quick go. I uh, we'll wanna make sure they're centered. So I'm gonna center them based off the back here and then slide them out. And then what I wanted to do is open these up, make sure we ungroup this section here on group and then select all of these, open them up, open the properties panel here, go to the attributes tab, and it's not gonna let me adjust the rotation, it doesn't look like. If I try typing in 180 here, does that work? Nope. Um, come on, set that back to zero. Uh, try 180 here, 180. Mm, almost, but no. Um, so I'll set that back to zero and one last try 180. No, not even close. I, I am baffled. Let's try that again. looks like it's only 90 degrees off for some reason. I'm not sure how that happened. Um, fourth dimensional rotations. Am I right? <laughs> Uh, zero, try 90 degree rotation here. No, try 180 degree rotation there. Try a negative 90 degree rotation there. Oh, there we go, we got them, okay, and let go. Yes, in order, we've got our pins, not half bad. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit play. And now we'll grab this ball. Give this a good go. That was a really bad go. <laughs> um, where are those bumpers, please? There it is. Oh, oh. What? What? <laughs> um, <laughs> open the properties. Physics is turned on. Gravity's on. Physics is set to default. But that center, oh, center of mass. 
Lock center of mass anchor. I don't know what that means. Um, I think because the center of mass is so low, it just couldn't fall over because of where it was hit from. Um, so let's try turning it off because we really want these to fall easily. Let's try that again. I'm going to get up real close and personal with this. Come on. No! Oh, no. Pins. What's up with you? Collision layer. Everything. I thought I set that to objects only, but... Whatever. Um, set that back to objects only. Physics. Oh, I didn't select them all and turn it off. Okay. Um... Weight simulation when held, center of mass override, off. Okay. That is my mistake. Let's try that again. Select and... <laughs> Did you see that, Craig? <laughs> I still only see one pin, and the one pin I see is not moving. I'm going to jump this out one and pin. back in. Oh yeah, no worries. One pin fell over. Just one. <laughs> it's just so bad. It's so sad. Oh my goodness. It couldn't have been any worse than that. Okay. Um, hmm. It could not have been any worse than that. My goodness. I'm like almost thinking we make these top heavy so they fall over easier. Maybe it's this mass. What if we just drag the mass down to be like nearly nothing? Okay. Grab this bowling pole and Oh, oh, okay. It worked. They didn't fall the right direction though. They really didn't fall the right direction. Hmm. Stop. I want to try oh, there this they out. Yeah, they're just not falling the right direction, so I'm going to just see what happens if I throw a bowling ball at The world's stopped, of course. Try that again. Okay. What happens if I throw a bowling ball at them? Like, no? No, come back to me! Ah! <laughs> okay. Um... Here, Craig, since I failed, take a bowling ball. We're trying to throw it at the top of them. No, it did It did nothing. Why? And, like, it falls the <laughs> wrong way. It's, it's hysterical, but it's like, why? Hmm. Okay, I have a theory. I have a theory, and... The theory is that our cube collider is just too perfect. Yeah, that's that's why I put the the cube at the bottom. Yeah, rounded colliders can very quickly cause your world to like basically go to five frames per second, which is why I'm gotcha. so careful with them. Um, But I wonder Maybe if we adjust these properties so that they have something else. So let's go physics. Let's give them uh, zero drag. Zero, like, oh, there's our friction. I don't know what these frictions do, but we're just going to turn them down really low. Bounciness can go up a little bit, sure. What we want to do, though, is make the... center of mass higher so instead of doing minus point two we do positive point two okay let's see what happens you can have a ball and oh so disappointing <sighs> yo 
Well, looks, we got all sorts boiling. of problems. We got all sorts of problems here. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We really do. Okay, I need to take a mental like break, and then I'm going to come back to this. I just need to think about this for just a second, and then we'll come back. Hey yo, welcome back again. Thanks for sticking through. We're going to keep working on this. Um, if you weren't aware, Horizon Live has already started, so if you're interested in watching that, feel free to go check that on the Venue Nights channel. I'll even post the link for you right now. That is a uh, 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 command. How do I get there? How am I in full screen mode? Uh, let's drag this over here. Yeah, so Video Nights has the live stream for Horizon Live, which now starts an hour early. So that is why we're still going. But uh, let's go command V this into here. There we go. Are the pins super heavy, like heavier than the ball? Come on, strike. I don't know, Pigeon. I'm going to have to look at it. I just, I made the ball really, really heavy. I gave it a super amount of mass. So I just felt like anything would knock it over. Um, and then I, I did turn the mass down on the pins, but it didn't save for some reason. Like I saved the mass as being like ridiculously small and then it was still kind of high. Um, so I should look at that as well. Ah. <sighs> Ah, so that link is to the live stream if you want to go watch the talk on Horizon Live. They should be having the guest coming on soon. They have a secret guest that joins uh, around this time every day. Or every, every Sunday. <laughs> I know, we need to get that strike. That's the most important part about this is like, if you can't get a strike, bowling is not fun. And that's where I was like, I was playing the Horizon lawn bowling, if you saw that earlier just a minute ago. And it was like, this isn't fun because it's not getting us a strike every time. Not every time, but you know, like, you should be able to get a strike. And I think that's just way harder than it should be on there. So the pins should be able to knock each other over, right? Like, that should be important, too. But I'm also thinking these might need to be made into rounded colliders, despite my absolute hatred towards rounded colliders. Um, but what we could do... What we could do with the rounded colliders is make them spheres, which are not intense on the physics engine, as long as they are perfectly scaled spheres, we could get that to work. Problem is you won't get that sort of tipping back upright effect that we like when you're pulling bowling, where it's like, oh no, and then it like stays upright. So there's that, but just getting them to fall over is really what's important at this point. <laughs> Physics are not the best yet. <laughs> Maybe push objects on point of collision. Yeah, that's not a bad idea either. I didn't really want to get into object collision because like my goal with a lot of these videos, especially right now, is just keep things as simple as possible because like we could get into all sorts of really fun scripting, but the simpler it is, the easier it is for everybody to implement. And um, a lot of people who ask for some of these things are really like... So Pigeon, if you don't know, is like a really amazing scripter. Um, so absolutely her and I could script this and it would be like perfect but um I think it's important to make this as easy for everybody to use which is part of the reason I'm like spending a lot of time trying to figure this out <clears throat> look at the pin in asset see what's the difference um so Dion if you look at that asset there's six scripts running on it which is exactly what I was just saying is like they scripted it and it was pretty obvious that they scripted it when I looked at it um I don't know how heavy it's scripted. I don't really intend to look at the script. I mean, we could, but, um, and you could if you want to. But I think, you know, our, our goal here is not to use any of the scripting that they had um, implemented. Because another thing that happens with scripts is people just like, it breaks. And they're like, ah, my bowling set doesn't work. So if we rely more on the physics engine, theoretically the physics engine gets better and the bowling experience gets better. <sighs> okay. We're getting there though. I'm gonna take a sip of water and then we're hopping back in. But not a bad suggestion, Dion, not a bad suggestion. Okay. <clears throat> we're back. So, 
moment of truth. My hands, I felt so good about the way the ball, bowling balls were working, but I do want to take Pigeon's advice and try this and see if that might be the issue. <clears throat> Physics, mass, just drive it up to 500, why not? Delete this one, and let's go try that out. Make sure to put my straps on so my controllers don't go flying. <clears throat> We're basically developing Wii Bowling over here. Oh my goodness. Uh, oh gosh, look at how that, that's, that's, yeah. I might as well have, oh, <laughs> yeah, look at that pigeon. Even with a ton of mass, like almost, if you can give it enough momentum, it kind of, but it'll only do one of them. Oh, almost. It's like almost there. It's interesting how it's doing that on the top of it. I wonder if there's a collision something that I missed. Oh, did you use a pyramid? No. No? Oh, wait. Yes, I did. I used so that, uh, the collider the is a pyramid. The neck right there to give it that. Well, that's a cone. Down. Let me zoom yeah. in on this real quick. Uh, open this up. Oh, no, that says it's a cube. Also says that cube is non-collidable. What? And what's collidable in here? What? Oh, that's where I made it objects only. Got it. <clears throat> Make it everything, just in case that's causing a problem. This, so it is a rounded mesh that's colli collidable at this point, which is even more crazy. Um, but that explains why it was rotating like that. Um, <laughs> Could it be that the collider is in the ground, perhaps? And we just need to lift these up. Let's zoom out. <clears throat> let's slide this. Well, yeah, let's slide this up just a hair. And then let's duplicate. Oopsie daisy. That didn't work. Okay, try again. Maybe it's undo. Undo, 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 undo. I can't tell how far back I need to undo. Okay. Undo, do, undo, undo. Oh my gosh, nothing's working. Oh, I'm so scared. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> nothing's functioning correctly. Okay, and then array tool. Okay. What is happening here? I cannot figure this out to save my life. Okay, slide that over there. <clears throat> oh my gosh sorry my throat <clears> is <throat> just messed up and grab check and slide and whatever close enough <laughs> <laughs> oh come on duplicate array tool Okay, that's pretty close. I don't think it's good though, but we'll uh, try it out and see. Super heavy bowling pin. They've been lifted up off the ground a little bit more. Okay, you oh. know what? We're actually getting somewhere. Are the How rings, the red, the red rings, are they collidable maybe? No, it's it's um it's bouncing because it's the um, long egg pill that's collidable. So it's rolling uh, on top of that. Um, and the reason it's it's sitting like that is because I moved <clears throat> the center of the mass into the head, and so instead of being in the center, okay, you know what? We might have gotten to something that might not be the worst thing I've ever seen. Uh, let's slide <laughs> that. Open the properties panel. Adjust our center of mass. Just turn off the center of mass override and so maybe the problem was the collider was in the ground let's also adjust our mass down to absolute nothing um and then we might fix the top of that having some sort of collision mesh in a minute but before we do adjust the properties of this so that the 
mass is much lower, so it's not breaking our hand. And then let's give you a ball as well. There we go. And because I want different colors, my ball is going to be purple. You can have a blue ball, but mine will be purple. And hit play world. Okie dokie. Not bad. Good luck with your throw. Oh no. Oh, your throw is not bad. Oh, and they're still slowing down so fast. This must be because the mast is so high. Oh. You not one. Oh. I got three. It was weird <laughs> interaction. I don't understand why the pins are so intense. Like, how did the purple ball bounce off of it when the mast is 90 times higher? Like, what is <laughs> happening there? I don't understand that. Um... Okay, Mass, you're going down to 0 0.01. If this doesn't allow you to be happy, I don't know what is. This is the lowest the Mass could theoretically even go. So, bowling pins with a mass of 0.1. Bowling balls will have a mass of much less, more like 20. And that's still 200 times the mass. So I don't know <laughs> what to tell it if it doesn't like this. Okay, give it your best throw, Craig. Okay. And it comes to a complete stop, which is not like super ice. So I don't understand why it's doing that. I got one pin down. That felt really oh, nice. Your throw is just missed. absolutely <laughs> awful. Um, so, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, let me read some of these these notes here. Uh, let's see that strike. <laughs> Thanks, Pigeon. Uh, I like the fact that it's not scripted. Thanks, Dion. I appreciate that. 100%. It's easier to implement and share without scripting. Thank you. I totally agree. I mean, yeah, absolutely right. Okay. I think it's time we implement our first script, and it's going to be easy. And the only reason I'm implementing this is so that we can keep augmenting this, updating this really fast. And so uh, what we need to do is go into our build menu and pull out a script gizmo and a trigger gizmo. Now this is a very simple script. In fact, oh man, well you guys, no, you won't kill me because you can do this. Please, please, please don't be upset. <laughs> okay, so if you open your menu and you go to the uh, asset library and you scroll down to the asset library under community spotlight, there is a new script called object return script. And if we pull this out, we can keep just this script. We're not keeping anything else in here. And now this object return script can be the basis for our bowling ball. And it saves 90% of the scripting, so you don't have to do it. So by opening this up, we're going to call this bowling ball. Bowling ball. There we go. Okay, so now that we have our bowling ball script, we can attach this script to both bowling balls. So I'm gonna select this one, select this one, open the properties panel, and then from the bottom right, you can attach the bowling ball script to both simultaneously. And now that we've attached this, this bowling ball will have the return script attached to it. So if we open up the properties panel, you'll see all of those properties are now available on the bottom of each of these. and. Because these are running the default properties, we can adjust all of the properties for both bowling balls from the variables tab in here. For instance, we don't want it to be instant. We want this to happen on a delay and is held is not going to be relevant. So do we want to use, how much of this do we want to use? I'm trying to think. Um, <clears throat> Let's see, this delay of 30 seconds is fine. Auto return distance of one meter is fine. Um, so this is how far away it is, but when it auto returns. And the other thing we wanna do is have it return after it gets back far enough. So I think a 30 second delay is fine, but let's actually, let's adjust this to a 60 second delay. So that way it's like, if you throw a really slow ball that takes 30 seconds to get down the aisle, it's still like, it gets to the end. And then what we wanna do is connect a trigger enter event. So what we wanna do is go into our events tab and then say from the bottom, you'll find 
listen to events, drag and drop that into the when world is started event. Then go to our variables tab and create a new object, which is a trigger. And this is gonna be called um, exit trigger. And then click confirm. And then we can listen to events on the exit trigger. Now this exit trigger is what's gonna be at the very end of this bowling alley. And then when the bowling ball goes through it, it's gonna receive an event. So we go back to our events tab and this event is actually, there's an even better way to do this. Sorry, I'm just thinking about this. Um, ask, nix what I just said about creating this event and connecting to it. Just, this is way easier. So now that we have all of our like delay and all of the settings for how this bowling ball is gonna work, we can close out of this script and we're done with it because these bowling balls now can return automatically. If we just leave it like this, when the bowling ball gets to the end, it will auto return after a period of time. You don't even have to do anything else. But if you want it to return a little bit faster, you can return it faster by pulling out the trigger gizmo and a script gizmo. And then this script gizmo is going to cause the return event to happen just a little bit faster. Sorry, my nose is just like super itchy right now. I'm like, I don't know if you guys ever get that. <laughs> like, is there a cat hair inside my thing or, oh my goodness. feels like I'm being like feathered with a little feather duster. Okay, and we're back. Okay, let's give this script a good name. And so we're gonna call this object return trigger. And the way this script is going to work is that not when world is started, we can delete that. When the trigger is entered by an object, so drag that on over, we are going to then scroll up and send an event to the object that entered the trigger. So if we drag this object pill down, we can send the return event to that object. And if we want it to happen with a delay, so it feels like it's going down that tube, we can say send return to object with a delay of say three seconds. And now we can delete this and now whenever that trigger is entered by an object, that object will return after three seconds. So the next thing we can do, and the, the reason we know this works, I, I wrote the script for the return script, so I'm just like, and you guys might have too if you've used this script before, but if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see that when return is received, it moves back to its origin position. And so this is all we're causing. We're just causing this event to happen. Um, if you are interested in that video, it's on the channel. It's a relatively recent video and it's super awesome. Okay, so we've got our object return trigger script written. Now we open up the properties panel and then at the bottom we can attach the object return trigger script. And then what we need to do is make sure that this trigger is on, what we need to do is make sure that this trigger is set to detect objects. Currently it's set to players by default. So we just tap over to objects. We'll give it a tag, which we're just gonna call it tag. And this is so that we can do both pins and balls. So it's just a generic tag. And then what we'll wanna do is make sure that this bowling ball and this bowling ball open their properties panel under the attributes tab. And we can do both of them at the same time. We just type in T-A-G, capital T-A-G. And now they are both tagged so that when they enter this trigger, they will return. So let's go ahead and grab this trigger and move it to the end of our bowling alley over here. And I'm just gonna fill this whole space up, this whole little area. Whenever the bowling ball gets over here, this is going to cause it to exit. We'll see how far that goes in, perfect. So that should work. I'm gonna make it a little bit lower. And I guess it's time for Craig and I to give it a test. Let's see if our bowling ball return script works. So I have my purple ball, you have your blue ball. Oh, and I love the way this feels. Oh man, and it didn't knock any pins down. Good news is, Three, two, and one. My bowling ball is back, look at that. So I got my bowling ball and I can throw it, which <laughs> did not work very well. I guess this is why you do one at a time. Uh, and as soon as our pins get to the end, if you knock them all down with that, are you kidding me? I literally hit it with so much speed and it didn't do anything. <laughs> and of course you get your ball back, so that's cool. And so now we just need to reset the pins, which shouldn't be that hard. But my goodness, what if the floor is ice? Unfortunately, um, setting the floor to ice doesn't work because 
it's not a physics object. Like that totally makes sense. <laughs> like if the floor was slippery, right? But unfortunately that's not how physics works. And I'll just quickly show you just to, just to prove it. I think it's like, it doesn't even have a physics opportunity here because you'd have to make it um, physics. And once you make it physics, then the floor literally just falls out from underneath you. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> we're not going to make it physics, <laughs> but yeah. So anyway, unfortunately that's not how that works, but I wish. So for our sliding to be a little bit more accurate, I do think we should go back to that super ice we were on before because it worked really well. And I don't know why it doesn't work so well once we adjust the properties. So we set super ice and let's see if that works. Is it the weight simulation? Oh, right, I gotta hit play world, script and play. And here we go. Oh, none of those pins. It's for as soon as I hit that. But it does seem to slide really well, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm getting it's some like weird once lag. Go super ice, I'm not sure what that they was. They don't. They don't knock over the pins at all. Oh, is that what's happening? They don't knock over the pins on super ice. Oh, oh. there it goes. Maybe not. I mean, hmm. they do just not very well. Hmm. What am I thinking? I wonder what if we make the bowling pins super ice? <laughs> <laughs> the problem is they might slide backwards because of the angle. <laughs> okay, physics. Maybe we make them ice, not super ice. We make them ice. Okay. Okay, so they're set to ice and I'm hitting play. Let's try that. See who hits it first. Oh no, it didn't do anything. Give it your best shot. Nope. Darn. Oh. It's like my bowling ball should not be bouncing off of it though. Like, ugh. Okay. I'm going to stop the world and I'm gonna turn up the mass on our bowling ball. So they're at 12.84. No, but that didn't seem to work. It's like they're bouncing off it. What if I make zero bounce? There's no bounciness. Can't bounce. There's no bounce. <laughs> I just, I'm just going to keep saying it so hopefully it understands. No bouncing off pins. Um, these pins, open the properties panel, go to the physics tab, and adjust their mass down to 0 0.01, just like it was before. There we go. Play. Okay, give that a go. No, I still not. I mean, it like, but just like, <laughs> it's not very realistic. What is the, okay. <laughs> I, I, I can see your guys' comments, by the way. So feel free to like keep commenting um, and we'll keep reading them as we're going. But my goodness, you'd think, you'd think that would have worked. Seems like they still bounce if you throw it just right. <laughs> really? Yeah, I can't get mine to bounce, so I'm happy with it. It really shouldn't be able to throw that high. I mean, could I throw a bowling ball that high? <laughs> I guess, could I? I don't know if I could throw a bowling ball that high in the real world. Like, yeah, just run out of the way when it hits the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I could. I've never tried throwing it up in the air. Like... It does have a pretty good throw, though. I feel like the bowling balls throw pretty well. Yeah. So I'm feeling pretty okay with the bowling balls throw. And stop. I forgot to turn my air conditioner back on. I'm like, it's a little <laughs> hot in here. There we go. Okay. Let's see. So the bowling balls are returning well. The bowling pins are not returning well. Um, but I want to get them working correctly before I change them. I kind of wonder what if we move, I like, I, I don't want to keep messing with this, but I feel like it's the right answer. So we go physics, we go center of mass override and then set it to negative minus point 
four. And throw. Not in the slightest. Uh, totally missed. <laughs> Oh, because I, I did the wrong direction, I think. Well, that would stop the world. <clears throat> Make it positive point 0.4. Okay. And play the world. Oh, snap. I hit the wrong button. Okay, it's still good. And in. Okay. And have your blue ball. I want I can't grab the purple one. Oh no. Okay, I'm using your ball. If you can grab mine, you're welcome to it. What is what is happening over there? <laughs> what is happening over there? I don't I don't know. Um these bowling pins are now cursed. <laughs> and stop. Okay. Time to turn off the center of mass. That was a bad idea. Center of mass override off. And... Yeah, I just don't know what to do. Because the ball just won't slide through it. So I'm almost wondering, like, I don't really want to write a script, but I'm almost wondering, like, what if we just, like, keep pushing the velocity forward on it? <laughs> she says, uh, Pigeon suggests we keep it super ice, but increase the drag a little bit. I don't know why we'd want to increase the drag. Um, I can't even select my ball. Can you, um, can you delete it for me? Delete the bottom one. Thank you. Okay. Physics. Hi, Moa. Hi, Drip TV. Oh, I'm not sure if you're saying hi. Hi. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, I've added drag to the bowling balls. I don't know why, but we have added drag as per Pigeon's request. <laughs> um, and that was my fear, is it would just come to a stop, so... Yeah, I could do like less, but that's kind of like the reason I'm like, oh, maybe she was talking about the pins that were kind of being Drag funky. On the pins. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Um, not sure. I don't. I don't know that I want to do that because the problem is they're just not knocking over. It like it doesn't even matter that the pins are behaving like that. It's just like they get hit, and then a second later they knock over. Like, if we did one player at a time, we could transfer ownership of all the pins. But like I said, I didn't really want to get into ownership transfers and stuff like that. Like, that's like, no, don't do that. Um, by the way, let's increase that up to here. <clears throat> hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Yeah, the pins are colliding with everything still. Um, I don't believe they're... Oh, they are on objects only. That's nice. Okay, yeah, let's try everything. See if maybe that was throwing off the whole physics pattern. 
and play. Uh. Nope. <laughs> You know, at least we get our ball so we can keep throwing it, but it's no better than what Meta had created. So, yay, I got one pin. <laughs> the overhand throw is just nasty. Ugh. My aim is way off. <laughs> oh no, the roll just slowed down so much. Oh, snap, but oh. I did it. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. It seems to work if you th bowl slowly. It doesn't seem to work if you mm -hmm. bowl fast. So it's like speed bowling doesn't work, but... So let's just prove that. Let's just try doing only slow throws. I'm going to do it up close so I don't mess it up. So only slow throws. Oh, that didn't work. Not even close. You call that a physics interaction? Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, I'm dead. Uh, no, we dead. Okay. Don't even know why that happened. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> What if we use custom gravity, set it to be like minus one. So it's barely, it's barely holding on to this planet. Um, it's got very little mass. <laughs> Might as well be floating away. Um, there's nothing holding you down. You know what I think is happening? Um, oh, come on, bowling ball. You have to go that slow. Come on. <laughs> yeah. So here's what I think is happening. Um, there's this thing in Horizon with player movement, and I wonder if it's affecting objects too. I'm wondering if it's affecting objects. So, Pigeon, you probably know this. Um, so... When you try to move a player, like, let, let me demonstrate this actively. Um, and we're going to go grab a shape so we can run this script off of it. And then we're also going to grab a script. And so we're just going to, this is just a test script to show you how this works. So, uh, Craig, I apologize. I hope you don't get motion sick easily. Um, you don't? It's going to be like riding a roller coaster. I apologize. It's okay. <laughs> if you want me to not to, I will, I will not do it. Um, so speak now or forever ride this roller coaster. <laughs> he seems to be okay. So I just turned on custom player movement. And so what we're going to do is create a really quick loop. When event is received, send event with delay, send event with delay. And then we want to affect Craig... And so Craig is probably, and we'll pull that out in a second. So we're going to go to movement and we're going to set player speed. No, set, add player physical velocity. Yeah, let's just add player physical velocity. And the player is going to be operators tab, um, get player from index. And I believe you are at index one. And so you should be moving upwards now. Are you being moved up? A little bit. You're, you're being a little hopped, right? Yep. Yeah. And if I give you like 10, you're going to just like really start. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Look at him go. <laughs> Bye, Craig. Okay. So we're going to keep having fun with Craig. Um, so we're going to set it back to zero. So he's going to fall down now. Come on back down, Craig. Had fun up there, but it's time to come back to Earth. Good job. <laughs> okay, so Craig's back. And w what I was trying to demonstrate is with these bowling pins, we're trying to apply force. 
in a horizontal direction. And if I try to apply force to Craig in a horizontal direction, notice how he's, look at he's barely even moving. It's like, it's not really enough to move him. And so I'm wondering if this is what's happening to the pins. And so if I apply that same force upwards to Craig, you can see he actually gets thrown off the ground. And so I want to see what happens if I throw a 10 on you sideways. Yeah, you barely move. Like it's not nearly what happens if I throw a 10 on you vertically. If I throw a 10 on you vertically, you're just like instantly thrown. Like, look at that. Like, and so I think what's happening with the pins is they don't want to move horizontally. They're kind of grounded. And so the question I have is, is there a way that we can hit the ball, the pins and cause them to kind of fly up rather than, um, so that as soon as they become ungrounded, they should like fall like you'd expect. You'd think, you'd think. So maybe, oh, what if we remove gravity from the pins entirely so they're just floating there? Okay, so they're not grounded then. So if we just go to these bowling pins and say no gravity, gravity's off. They are gonna be moved up just a hair off the ground. So not noticeably off the ground, but off the ground. And then we hit play. And then we grab our bowling pin or bowling ball, give it a throw. Come on, come on. <laughs> I mean, it's obviously levitating, but ah. I don't know. Keep throwing your bowling ball. Let's see what we can do with this. I'm going to get up close. Oh, gosh. Somebody delete that from the video. That was awful. <laughs> Can't believe that happened. Okay. And throw. Nope. Okay. So that didn't actually cause it to work. Darn. I really would have thought that would have worked. Is only one? Or did I only apply it to one? I could swear I applied it to all of them. Yeah, I applied it to all of them. Hmm. Yeah, it's so weird. So weird. Gravity back on. What is the friction value on the pins? Okay, let's take a look. Well, we had set them to suit or to ice. Um. So it's 0 0.02 and 0 0.05. I'll just turn it completely off. Make it non-bouncy. No more bouncing pins. Um, okay, and play. Let's give this a go. Oh gosh, wait. I did it! <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, it looks like... Somehow, we managed to make it perfect. I don't know how. What happened there? <laughs> Turned off all of the friction. It's point zero one one of these. Okay, it does appear to be whole. Oh. Nope. Well, that wasn't the one we need to adjust. Put that back. Physics. Okay. That back to zero. Try adjusting this to 0 0.01. And play. Yep. Not so much. The easiest strike in history. <laughs> <laughs> indeed <laughs> indeed um let's see i don't know they were like they wouldn't fall down and now it's like i just did it by just a minuscule amount and they now just completely fall over every single time what's going on physics Point zero two. 
We'll just move them both up to 0 0.02. Which is pretty close to where they were before. Okay. Okay. I don't think it's going to work well, but uh, say goodbye to your ball. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, joke's on me. My ball doesn't even go. Hey, but I got a pin down. And so did you. <sighs> Unfortunately, this is looking like we have to script our own physics engine, is what it's looking like to me. Um, I have some ideas on easy scripts that could work to make this work better. Um, basically, we'll get to that, but... Um, my goodness. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see. Am I still applying force to... Oh, yeah, I'm not applying force to you anymore. Okay, good. But uh, just for funsies. <laughs> Go flying! Bye! Oh, the world's not started. I was like, I wanted you to go. Bye! I want to I apply this to me, too. That looks like fun. Zero. <laughs> it please. is pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Oh. oh, it doesn't go very high. But it kind of feels like... Oh, whoa, did I get a double jump in there? Oh, I totally can double jump! If you, like, bounce and then jump... Oh, wow, oh. yeah. Okay. Like, game mechanics right here. Okay. <laughs> I'm turning it off, but that was fun. Okay. I think we need to hold off on continuing on bowling for a little bit. Um, man, we've attacked, we've tackled some really cool stuff here. But this is just like way too much time. We've been on this for two hours and the last hour has basically been us trying to figure out how to get the physics to work correctly. And so I apologize that it has been a brutal game of playing with a physics engine. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> welcome. And so... I would encourage you guys to not get disappointed if you are also finding that you spend a lot of time playing with things, trying to get it to work, because this is just a part of the process. This is totally normal. I mean, for all intents and purposes, what we are building here is an entire world. Like, once the lane is set up correctly and the game mechanic works, you could make a few of these, and now all of a sudden you've got an entire bowling mini game. So, like... This isn't unprecedented. I mean, to only be here for two hours and be pretty decently along. I mean, we've got bowling balls that work really well. We've got, you know, a nice bowling lane. It should be thinner, but, you know, it's on the right track. So I'm definitely not upset with where we've gotten. And I appreciate you guys hanging out. We're going to see if you guys have any more questions to answer. And then um, we might come back to this next week and <laughs> take another stab at um, basically what we're looking at to do here is say when objects collides with this apply physical force darn I just like I feel like we need to script it so it's one player at a time and you know it's like while you're in this zone only if you're not the right player you get pulled out of this like, I think we could take this to a whole level where it's like an incredible bowling mini game and it works incredibly well but at that point, is it worth making a tutorial on? Because it's just, it's it's so in-depth. There's so many pieces. Welcome, DF said. New to this chat in Horizon Worlds, you already have a video out here to show how to make a sound play when a player enters a trigger. Um, we do. There's definitely a few of them, actually. But because it is so simple, we actually did it even earlier in this. Um, we did that earlier today, too. It's quite literally this. Pull out the trigger. Pull out a script. Go to your sounds. Pull out a sound, we'll get a good sound. There we go. And then make sure that sound, we'll set it to be a little bit louder, uh, or the distance is off, right there we go. And then that's all good. So the script right here, you go into the script and you say, create a new variable, object, and this is the sound that you want to play. So we're gonna call it sound, click confirm. This script runs on the trigger. The trigger references the sound, which allows it to be played. And so then we say on the events tab, when trigger is entered by a player, we can delete when world is started. We'll also call this script play sound. All right, there we go. 
And when the trigger is entered by the player, what do we want to do? Actions tab, pull over the play sound. And then over on our variables tab, drag that sound pill over into self. Go ahead and close out. Open up the trigger. At the bottom right, we can attach the script by dropping down and grabbing the play sound. Open up this properties panel. Find this pill at the bottom right. Drag that into the empty pill slot there. And now when we enter this trigger, there it is. Got some nice sound. So, cool beans. We can do that as many times as we want. So uh, there you have it. I hope that answers your question. Um, let me know if you still have more questions about that. If you are like, wow, that was easy. Let's take it a step further. Uh, you can do something slightly more advanced by grabbing a custom event called when event is received occupied and then occupied is received with a new parameter, which is a player parameter called PLID. And I'll tell you more about that in just a second. We then just drag place down down into here, delete the trigger enter. And what occupied does is it says once the trigger is occupied by one player, not two players, not three players, but just that first player to occupy it, it then plays the sound. So that prevents it from going off multiple times. And you have to have the player ID because the trigger enter event is received with the player ID. So the occupied event is also received with the player ID. And that's how you do that. And so now what you'll see happen is if I make this trigger nice and big and we'll put it right here at the beginning, right? Um, if I walk into this, it'll play the sound. And then if Craig walks into it, go ahead and walk into the trigger, trigger. So now it's playing. Oh, but you have to stay in there. Just stay in there for a second. And if I walk in, it's only played one time. So I can keep walking in and out and it's not going to play until Craig leaves. And then we're both entering it. So it's definitely the better method. Yeah, no problem. Absolute pleasure. Thanks for asking. In fact, we probably should have kept that, but that's okay. It's gone. <laughs> um, let me see what else you guys have said. Hey, cousin, want to go bowling? I know, right? <laughs> um, let's see. Getting my video verification. I passed my test first time. Congratulations, but I have no way to log in. Um, if you're talking about the pretest, if you're talking about the pretest, um, you should have gotten an email with instructions on how to um, purchase the actual like evaluation with Jay. And then once you've passed the evaluation, that's when you get your login to get access to the world. If you find yourself in the verification page and you're already there, then you have definitely passed the full, the full evaluation. At that point, you might need to reach out to Jay, just send him an email as a reply to one of his previous emails and just ask him for the login. It might have ended up in spam. Sometimes, uh, email boxes will mark those as spam. How do you do that with playing notes for a mixer? Let's try a mixer. Let's see, how do you do that with playing notes for a mixer? So I assume you're talking about something. Let's see if I have this still on me. I think I'm pretty sure I, de yeah, I deleted it uh, a while ago. I did, that's okay. Um, go ahead and undo a couple steps here and reattach the trigger boop reattach play sound open up connect the reference pill okay so we've got our script set up here so if you wanted to build like a a mixer you might imagine you have buttons something like this maybe probably a lot cleaner and cooler looking and each of these buttons would be referencing a different sound pill, but you'd put, a, you'd put a trigger on each of the buttons. And then when you come in, uh, let's lift those up. Let's try that again. So then you would lift that up. And so if you have a big mixer, you could like hit it with your hand. And then you could hit each of the different sounds to cause different sounds to play. And then that would be more like a drum kit, right? And so if you wanted it to be really small, you could make it like finger size and that will also work. But you have to be a lot more careful that you don't accidentally hit the trigger. There you go. But yeah, so let me know if that answers your question. Oh, Byron, I'm glad you're here. We are pretty much at the end. <laughs> but great that you made it <laughs> oh poor guy um 
<laughs> I, uh, Video Nights is live actually right now. I am sad that I'm missing it, but um, you can also check that out. Link is above in the chat. But um, they are doing a talk show with Oculus right now. So that's pretty cool. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Look at that mixer. Boom. I made that out of uh, some of your scripts. <laughs> nice. We implemented the sound. Oh, look at that. <laughs> He's got these PGA pieces. Nice. I love this. So cool. <laughs> so these are right from <laughs> the work. asset library, the video asset pack. Whoa. They Am move. I seeing that? <laughs> Whoa. I was just messing around. No, that's really cool. Stop. Clear and play. Oh, I hit the wrong button. <laughs> Try it again. So my hand can't get down there, but it's like almost, 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 almost. Yeah. Interesting. That's pretty cool. It did work. <laughs> At one point. <laughs> See, you have to raise these way up yeah i know i'm curious like oh i see how that works interesting huh i'm curious why that behaves like that cool guys um i'm gonna bounce out of this world craig thanks for joining us tonight as always great to see you and uh we look forward to seeing you guys more Come on over here. Hey everybody. Let's turn off that AC so you can hear me better. My goodness, what a night we've had. Quite the adventure. I, uh, whew. <laughs> quite the adventure indeed. Lots of like, just trying to figure stuff out. And like, I, I, um, I like brute forcing and just trying to figure if we can find a way that works. And that's kind of how you learn, I mean, um, you know, these physics tools are brand new, right? Like these are absolutely brand new. And um, most of the options that you guys were interested in, air hockey, bowling, they were all physics based. So we would have been learning a lot. Air hockey, um, I will admit, would have been a little easier because the way we did it, well, I take it back. It wouldn't have been easier. It would have been harder, but I already knew what I would do if I'd come into this problem earlier. Because in air hockey, what we did is we noticed that when it was set to super ice, it didn't have bounce. So my thought was that we could just slide the bounce up to get the bounce to work. But because it still bounced a little bit, we were able to project energy into the air hockey puck to keep it going. And so that was kind of like, like that would have been a nice fallback plan if we'd fallen into a similar area here. But um, no, interesting stuff though tonight. Absolutely interesting. Like very curious how we're going to get around that. Definitely need my brain to like soak on it, think about it. And I encourage you guys to do this too. I know I say this pretty much every stream, but like when you hit a bug like this, it's important to take a day away or the night away, do something else, hang out in Horizon, go to Horizon Live right now, um, or, you know, come back in the morning, come back in a couple hours. That refresh really helps like, okay, maybe I need to look at this in a different way. Like, I think the right way to do bowling is probably going to be not with physics, which stinks, but it does mean like there's a, there is a right way. Um, and it's not to say that there isn't multiple ways. Like if you were really happy with what you saw today, you can totally go implement that, right? Like there was, it was still really fun to throw that ball and have it keep coming back and be able to play with multiple people at the same time. Like one of my biggest things is like, okay, if we're being real about bowling, I'm not a huge bowling person. I've played a lot of bowling in my life. Um, enough that I'm not a big bowling person, right? Like there's a point where you've played enough. Um, but what I loved about playing with Craig is like throwing our balls at the same time was so much fun. Like there'd been just a whole array of pins out there and we were just knocking pins down together. That would be a lot of fun as a mini game. So I, I definitely encourage you to also think like, don't just follow the mainstream. Everybody plays bowling. No, not everybody plays bowling. What, what do people do when they go bowling, right? Like people are going bowling because they want a social activity. They just don't know what to do that night. They're like, I want some pizza. I want some soda. I want to hang out with my friends. Hey, there's a bowling alley in town. Let's go there. Um, like, so what's the real purpose behind going bowling? It's usually it's the social connection you make. And so what I really liked about bowling tonight was hanging out with Craig, getting to throw the bowling ball, hanging out with you guys. And if we could have, you know, a bunch of bowling balls, a bunch of um, pins, 
I think that could be a way more fun experience than traditional bowling. And so definitely think about breaking out of the mold when you're working in a space, especially like this. Um, like another thing we could do is just forget the whole bowling idea. Like no offense to whoever wanted bowling. Like maybe you love bowling and I'm like totally offending you right now, which is not my intention. I just, I think that personally for me, bowling is all about going out and hanging out with friends. It is nothing to me about the actual sport of bowling. So if you are all about the sport of bowling, by all means, there's a right way to do this. But I think if we re-tackle bowling, I'd like to see it be something different. I'd like to see it be, we throw the, the bowling balls as they are, are perfect, right? Like we nailed the bowling balls, but what we could do is instead of bowling pins, we put down balloons and you throw the bowling ball and it pops balloons. And so the balloons can be non-collidable, so that way the bowling ball is popping through them. And then it's like, I do, but I do love the way um, pins interact with each other. I think that's such a special thing. But I think to do pins right would be so more difficult than it should be. Um, like, it's really um, wind collision enter, add force at hit point, as Pitchin had mentioned, which I think to most people listening to this live stream right now uh, is like, sounds scary right like i think that sounds scary even i'm just like i don't know if i want to tackle that that doesn't sound like fun that sounds like trying to figure out some crazy math which it is and so i think the fun thing is like figuring out what people would actually enjoy which is a social experience throwing stuff down a thing it doesn't have to be bowling balls right like you could make um there was that one game on vr that was really popular when it came out it's like sports mashup or something. It's like it mashes up sports and instead of throwing bowling balls down the aisle, you're throwing like hockey sticks. Like that is fun, right? Like you're just doing something weird. You could have like a whole bunch of stuffed creatures. You're tossing down there. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think, there's, I think there's a lot of options in terms of where to go with this. And I think the right one is to recognize that the fun element tonight was multiple people being able to use the alley and the next fun part about it is like getting the things popped or broke like falling down so it could even be like they just disappear you could use a visual effect like a um, they have um this hit ring hit rings are extremely affordable on capacity meter and you could have a hit ring on the balloon or whatever and it pops and the balloon just disappears uh, which would be really easy because you have a trigger and the trigger says when tag enters trigger set visibility of my referenced balloon to false move the um, animation to self and then play animation which causes it to you know have that really cool popping effect you add a sound effect too i'm like really tempted to go implement that right now so maybe we will maybe i'll just take a quick couple minutes because that does sound fun oh my goodness <sighs> i don't know it's also been like how many hours are we at how many hours is this stream at four hours no we're gonna call it oh man it does sound like fun Oh, how, how hard would it be to implement that? Could I do it in like a few, let's see, popping balloons on a bowling alley. I'm gonna think about it, I'm gonna think about it. See if you guys have any more questions. Uh, yes, you have a great night too, Byron. But can you make it mixer record yet? Uh, I think you said record. No, unfortunately there's no record feature. That would be really cool though. Bowling ball launcher. Ooh. <laughs> see? See what I mean? There's so many creative ideas. Like, that sounds really cool. I loved the throwing, though. I mean, I think throwing in VR is hard for first-time users. Launching is way easier for first-time users. Um, but throwing is really difficult. I've been throwing in VR for two years, and I feel pretty good with my skills. But even that one throw that went off wacky to the right, I was just like, oh my gosh. Um, that's what like that's what throwing in VR is right now. It just doesn't feel right, which is why throwing is such a hard mechanic. <sighs> well, thank you guys. Um, if you haven't already, please hit that like button. Um, if you're new, I'd love it if you subscribe. You don't have to. I wouldn't be offended. But um, appreciate the support, you guys. We do this every Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Horizon Live is a talk show by Oculus that starts uh, two hours after at 6 p.m. Pacific, and that's 8 p.m. Eastern. And, 
Yeah, cool beans. Now we're gonna call it. I'm just I'm just whipped. It's like you know, it's been a four hour stream, so gonna go ahead and uh, rest for the rest of the day. I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. I encourage you to get into Horizon, try building. I love building. I know um, there's a lot of social elements in Horizon. Horizon is a very social app, and I love um, I love going out and like enjoying that sometimes. But most of what I love about Horizon is just creation. I don't know if anybody else feels that way. But it's like I could just be in the create tools all day long. Um, in fact, I have been. I literally have been in create mode since 7.30 this morning, and I've taken a couple hours out for like video call meetings and stuff, but almost my entire day today has been in VR. But, um, and, and, and create mode, because I just love creating. But uh, yeah, so have fun. Thanks for joining. I gotta let you go. I don't want to, but for now, bye! <laughs>